Someone said Digimon. I've been summoned. <laughs> Good evening. What's going on, guys? Right, can you hear me okay, first thing? I managed to just turn on Streamlabs and it just looked like it was working, which is a miracle. An absolute miracle. There we go. Attic's here, Rampage is here, and obviously Connor is here as well this evening. Very small little intimate crew this evening, which is fine. You guys get to share all the uh, goodies between us, which is beautiful. You guys get the early access, as always, on the stream, stuff like that. How's everyone doing? Did everyone have a good uh, bank holiday weekend? Four days I had off work. It was glorious. And I was hoping to get some pokey stock stuff done. Me and Connor were hoping that this package would arrive before the weekend, but it didn't. But it's fine, it just makes us wait that a little bit longer. You have to wait for the good things, guys. That's what happens. So, Bowen's here. What's going on, Bowen? It was nice, good, glad you had a good one. So yeah, we've got some uh, stuff from Japan, which is very exciting. Uh, I haven't felt like I haven't done an unboxing in so long. I feel like I've had such a long break since the huge, uh, well, since the last live stream, which was the huge box break we did uh, last weekend. Man, what a, what a stream that was. Thank you to everyone who was here. Obviously, Rampage, you were there, Attic, you were here. Uh, FedEx are on the naughty list. Brilliant. So yeah, I mean, that was an amazing, amazing evening. I had such a blast and uh, very, very glad to see some awesome pulls and for everything to be shared out as well. We didn't get too much of the old uh, one person walking away with all the spoils. It was a nice evening. It was good. No gold Snorlax, but it was a nice evening. No Christmas card for FedEx. Correct. No Christmas card for FedEx. Um, Connor, I've just messaged someone on Instagram about our live stream. They're asking about character rares, so hopefully they'll get back to us. Oh, there you go. Uh, yes, they will. Okay. Connor's on it. He's always on it, guys. He's always on it. So, what other things have we kind of got to talk about? Is there anything going on? I don't, I, I don't really know. Um, we are in the process of... Oh, you can tell people, right? Um, we are in the process of websiting. I've been doing that over the last few days, so I'm very excited to get that uh, rolling. You guys should be excited too. That's going to be really fun. Have you shipped those cards out? No, I haven't, Attic. I believe I've still got yours because you it was your first refresher. So I was waiting to see if you had more packs, which you have, I believe. So... Which means, essentially, that you'll get combined postage. However, I'm totally happy if you want me to um, if you want me to ship some stuff out. If you want me to just ship it, get it done, I can do that. Just drop me a message. Um, price of Pokemon cards and scalpers. You know, life's too short, Rampage, to get locked up on scalpers and stuff like that. Stuff like that, it happens. Um, I know it's not what a lot of people want to hear. But these problems have been prevalent for years. It's just another... Pokemon works like clockwork. It just... It seems to just work in cycles. And we're just on that downtrend. That's just what happens, unfortunately. But trust me. Weather the storm. Ride it out. The other side, it will be fine. And uh, use the people around you to get tips and tricks. And find out what everyone else is doing. And, you know, things will generally... Well, hopefully... Hopefully things will get a little bit better. So let's crack into these wonderful, wonderful packs. I've got some sleeves ready to go. And we've got some, I'm telling you now, we've got some unbelievable vintage cards later. And I'm very excited to see what the conditions of them are. Uh, Rampage, I know there's going to be some cards in here that you're going to be a fan of. Um, just because we know that you're typically a fan of uh, some McDonald's cards. So um, we've spared no expense. Uh, on these lots that we've got. We've got another one that's ready to ship, I believe, um, in kind of the next couple of days. So hopefully get that one out. And then we should be seeing that one arrive, I believe, kind of next week. I'm trying to keep them on a weekly schedule. So, yeah. Um, how's the music? Is it a good kind of volume? I never really know on the, the kind of mix on this kind of stuff, but... We shall see. We shall see. Uh, let's have a look what's in here then. So, 
Oh, big stack in this. You know these like little jumbo top loaders? They're outrageous, aren't they? They're incredible. Wouldn't mind some Japan. Oh, well. Bone, uh, you asked about those before. Uh, this is one of the Pikachu sleeves that I've got spare from something the other day. Um, so I am, I've got loads of these. So if you grab anything from us, I don't know, in the reasonable future, this is just set aside on my sleeve pile. So I'll be happy to sleeve a single up or something like that in there for you if you want, mate. Um, so let's have a look at some of this stuff. Look at that beautiful, beautiful sleeve. Pokemon card game, very nice, very Japanese that. So let's, uh, let's get a bit of a zoom, zoom on the go. So we've got Skeptile. Uh, we'll just the wait, wait out around page. I went to LGS over the weekend, grabbed some English product, <laughs> and he was telling me about his allocations. He doesn't even have enough to list stock online, and it's all going to locals. Guys, I'm telling you, uh, if you haven't watched it already. Um, or subscribe. I know he got some flack for some of the prices of his um, Shining Phase ETBs, but go watch and subscribe to Card and All Gaming. So Card and then the letter N, All, as in A-L-L, -L, Gaming, um, on YouTube. He has recently done a video about the uh, stock issues in the um, Pokemon kind of distributor level, and Chilling Rain is like the first set in a long time where distributors have actually significantly increased the price in their pre-orders in the US. So it doesn't look good for the UK, guys, I'm not going to lie. But these are the things you need to know, guys. If you want to know where to be in the hobby, know how to make the most of it, find the loopholes, you know, put yourself in a better position. You need to constantly be like reading about this, talking to people, understanding this stuff. Anyway, go check that out. It's good. Enough of that. I'm going to look at some cards because that's what we're here for, right? So. Septile McDonald's promo, very nice. And we have Deoxys, very, very cool. This was a hollow in EX Deoxys or EX Emerald. I, can't, I think it's EX Emerald. This was, I used to have this hollow and then I sold it because I'm an idiot. There is Togepi, very nice. So all of these McDonald's promos. And we've got Swampert, very nice. Blaziken, very nice. So we've got that trio, the three Hoenn Final Evolutions. Chikorita, another Swamper, very nice. Cyndaquil, lovely. And another Cyndaquil down on the end. Let's have a look at some of the conditions. I'm interested in the Deoxys. Let's have a look. Let's grab one of the Swamper and the Togepi. And the others I'll, I'll kind of get into after or whatever. Let's have a look at what these are looking like. Uh, they look pretty good. Let's have a look. Nice. A little bit on the top corner there. Minimal whitening on the back. That's what we like to see. Very nice. Very, very nice. Ooh, player's sleeve. Hello. That's a collector. That's when you know you've got an old school Japanese collector. When you've got sleeves like that and you've got sleeves like this. These are all like the Players Club exclusive sleeves. So that's for like the registered, like kind of Pokemon club over in Japan. Yeah, this swamp hurt's looking nice too. The edges aren't great, not gonna lie. But that's just how it is. And then the back is terribly centered. Very, very nice. And I believe these were peeled off. So these were ones that you would peel off like a little sheet. But these are looking good. I'm not even going to look at that Deoxys because they all look very similar. So very nice condition uh, promos there. Very, very much near mint. If there's any more kind of physical con uh, kind of condition problems on any of those, then I would normally kick those down to excellent slash light play. Guys, we're gonna always be 100% honest with all of the conditions and stuff on everything. You know, I've been buying cards for years. I want that same transparency if I was buying from somebody. So that's just how it is. So let's get these bad boys out. Very interesting sleeve structure here. Very interesting. It's like plastic randomly in different places on these. Very, very strange. But plenty of McDonald's promos. Let's keep this packaging off to the side somewhere. I just have to create a pile and then clean up afterwards. That's just how it works. I forgot some. Wab, a vet, and Pidgey. This has got to be the sassiest Pidgey you've ever seen in your life. What is going on? Oh, humans here. What's going on? How you doing? Human person, welcome. Um, so, yeah, we've got a Pidgey again. Very, very nice condition. Bit of whitening on that one bottom corner. A few more can, ooh, sliding because it's so glossy. These cards are glossy. The peel, peel cards in Japan, always glossy. Yeah, you can see the dirt and stuff. Definitely, I could clean that off easy. 
but yeah, definitely um, not quite as good condition. These promos, yeah, these, these ones are not as good as that other set, but that's fine. So Chikorita, we've got this Delta Species. I love Delta Species, they're great cards. Uh, Delta Species, Latios, another one of these Deoxys. Totodile, very nice. Flygon, love that. I don't know if Cal is tuning in, but I know uh, Cal is he's one of his favourite Pokemon. He's Flygon, I did ask him the other day. Then we've got Chimeco, or Chimecho, I'd say Chimeco. Then we've got Larvitar, very nice. Very cool Pokemon. And then another Togepi down on the end. So a few more of those McDonald's promos. Um, very, very nice cards. Nice to get that kind of old exclusivity aspect to things, especially with the whole, you know, McDonald's craze that went over towards earlier part of this year in the States. And I suppose, I hope for the rest of the world soon heard rumors that we might be getting that soon so that will be very very nice but you never know you never know pokey park is in what's going on how you doing thank you for dropping your post by the way on uh, instagram i've put my water down somewhere here it is um of the uh, card that we sent out to you we appreciate that very much i hope you're very happy with that look very very nice i just got a i got a dry throat just oh vici's here too what's going on how you doing, Vici? Oh, Saturn. I, I can never remember how to say this. Saturn. I'm going to say Saturnine or Saturn Nine Bear. I, I can't remember how, what the pronunciation is, but it is wonderful to see you in the chat again this evening. And I just want to put a shout out to your Twitter because the amount of incredible collector pieces that you've put out over the last weekend has been blessing my Twitter timeline. Um, I really, really enjoy seeing other people's collections and it is incredible to see um, the appreciation that you have for the art. Um, it's just awesome. Keep it coming. And I hope you are well this evening. So, let's have a look what's in here. And we do, oh, cling film, another Japanese specialty of wrapping. So guys, you can see from this, we have some of the Bandai these are very well protected. Bandai anim anime cards. Come on, I can do that. The, which are, admittedly, I was always a bit sceptical about these. Um, but, I mean, the pop reports on them are so low. Crazy low. Here we go. Uh, I got dragged into Locket League. Ooh! Connor, we might have found a third for our threes. <laughs> Me and Connor are big fans of Rocket League. Big fans. And if you're, what's this, Diamond 3, oh, Panya's in as well, what's going on? What's going on? Diamond 3, oh, you can, you're, you're right up our alley. Get us in, it's road to champ for us at the moment in Rocket League. So we will take it, we will take it. But that is in twos, I suppose, it's in twos. But we've been on the cusp, been so close for so long. So let's get all these out. But yeah, these are uh, anime cards. Uh, yeah, I was a skeptic, but I can't admit this crazy, crazy rush of nostalgia that I get from some of these. Um, very, very nice cards. So let's do a little zoom out a little bit first so you guys can see the whole set there. That looks good to me, apart from the glare. There we go, that's, that's a good location. So, kicking things off. We've got Ash with his Pikachu, very nice. And then we've got Snorlax blocking the way. We've got Bulbasaur with his paint and the villain mascot down here, Mr. Meowth. Karate kicking Snorlax. But always cool to see these, like I said, these anime scenes. So these are the uh, anime, the Cardass, the Bandai Cardass. There he is again. But these look in great shape, Con. These look in really, really nice shape. So I'm going to be very careful with these. Oh, they are. They're in, they're in really good shape. Uh, there's a few marks and stuff on them. Nothing crazy, but they are in lovely shape. And obviously, Japan has this obsession. This does have a crease on it, unfortunately, which you can see on the light just there. You see that? But yeah, Japan has this obsession with making a lot of the earlier TCG releases and some of the promo TCG releases glossy. They just love making these wonderful scratch magnet surfaces. And it is a pain, but it's just how it is. So we've got uh, Nurse Jenny helping out with um, uh, what looks to be a very sick Parasect Oddish 
Dodrio and Nidoran, or Nidorino, I should say. We've got uh, Ash and Brock looking fabulous. Love those outfits, that is beautiful. And then we've got Meowth again, the villain mascot, and Nurse Joy attending to... Oh no, that's Misty, sorry. That is not Nurse Joy, that is Misty. How could I mistake them? So, <laughs> bless crossplay. Please let me know about them. Snorlax cards. Are you selling them as a set? No, our plan is to sell these individually, I believe. I believe the set is massive. Like, there is a very large set of these card-ass cards. Um, so, yeah. But they, but they are very, very nice. And like I said, they are extremely... This one's really cool with the Voltors. And look at that far-fetched. So good. Um, Team Rocket blasting down a waterfall again. And then Farfetch and Psyduck having it out. Who's the best duck? So yeah, very nice cards. Um, but yeah, some of these are extremely, extremely expensive in the high-end PSA grades. Look at that Meowth there. Chowing down before Togepi's even hatched. Look, guys, Brock's chilling with him. Meowth's having some noodles. That Togepi had a journey before it hatched. And we've got Muck swallowing Professor Oak. Uh, Ash... Uh, Ash with Pikachu again, Meowth balling out with uh, with Onyx, and then oh, one of my favourite scenes from the anime of all, uh, just incredible this is, that Bulbasaur forest, the Bulbasaur garden where they all go and there's like that crazy scene where all of the solar energy just like goes to this Venusaur on the stump, so cool, so cool that scene is. So yeah, big one for the old Bulbasaur fans out there. Um... So yeah, God, like, look at these, they're so good. Look at Jesse and James here. <laughs> so many outfits in the uh, anime, didn't they? There's Gary Oak with the um, uh, Electabuzz and Hitmonlee in the back. Look at, look at that. Pikachu riding on Pidgeotto, love that. And there is Charizard, <laughs> Squirtle absolutely KO'd, what the hell. I can't remember this guy's name now, but that's a very cool Nine Tails and Rhydon. God, these, these are just wicked. Okay, uh, so we've got Pikachu facing a Fire Blast, which is, I believe, when they were fighting uh, uh, Blaine in Cinnabar. And then there's these. I've got no idea what these are. No idea what these cards are. Absolutely no clue. Oh, but there is an Umbreon, which is very cool. No idea whether that's worth anything or the context of them at all. They're very cool. Interesting. And then we just got more uh, iconic Pokemon. So Nurse, uh, sorry, Officer uh, Officer Jenny with her Growlithe. Got Team Rocket up to no good again. Got Ash, which I believe was the um, the uh, Obstacle Course episode. Bill with his camera. I believe that's Bill. Uh, very nice. And then Ash with yet more of his Pokemon. Chilling out with Bill. Misty. Ash with Weezing. I've got no idea who that one is. I can't remember that episode. It's a very nice, beautiful, beautiful uh, card ass Bandai. Uh, Bandai. I'm flipping it. Bandai card ass cards. Cannot complain at those. So that was the first of four big packages we got. Anything with Umbreon on it, on it is worth something. Yeah, the Evolutions always perform extremely well. Uh, have some of the best artworks as well. I know that Arita stuff from the um, from the E series era, those Umbreons are just beautiful. I know it had the McDonald's promo, then there was the Sky Ridge uh, Umbreon. Very very nice cards. Uh, but yeah, e the EV stuff is set to perform extremely well this year with the release of EV Heroes. Um, no idea whether that set will make its way to English before the end of the calendar year. Um, but I'm excited to see that product come out in Japanese. Very, very exciting. Um, the thing with that is that uh, we can't get hold of any on the Japanese uh, primary market. We're keeping our eye out as much as we can for uh, stock levels and such. But it is very, very hard to know whether we're going to be able to secure any. And we're probably going to have to go secondary market on a lot of that stuff. But it is what it is. You know, we want to get that Japanese product in for you guys so that we can do the box break streams, have a good time, enjoy opening the cards together. Um, so, yeah. 
whatever it costs, I think, especially for a set like that. I know there's lots of uh, Evolution fans out there. Talking of Eevee, look what's going on in this top corner. You guys can see that. Oh, Aquapolis, sorry, is the um, Umbreon Arita. I always get mixed up between um, Skyridge and Aquapolis just because it was an era of cards where I, I was, how old was I back then? Probably around 12, what did I say, 12? Maybe a bit younger. But you just couldn't find it anywhere. You know, I remember shops back then in the original WotC era. Uh, you know, I could have, I could, I could still buy Fossil, I could still buy um, Team Rocket Unlimited, obviously because it was the last of the um, classic, the classic, the original era of WotC. Uh, and I could still buy, uh, what else? There wasn't much gym, I'm not gonna lie. There wasn't much gym. Uh, Expedition hung around for a little bit, but Skyridge and Aquapolis, nada. I just, I don't ever remember there being any on the shelf. I, I think I had one pack, I think, of Skyridge, potentially, and a couple of pack, packs of Aquapolis that I ever got to open up as a kid when I was younger. Uh, if you ever get that squirt on McDonald's holo promo, yes, the e reader ones. The E series cards, yeah. We are always looking for those because they are awesome. I love the artwork on them. So I'm going to pop all of these. I'm just going to open all of these and then put them in a pile and then we can go through them. Um, but yeah, guys, anything that you do see um, this evening, if you are interested, then please, please reach out to us on Instagram or Twitter at Villain Cards. Just follow us there. Everything you need. Um, we'll do condition photos. You know, talk through all that stuff. I'll cover what I can on the stream because I always love to give you guys the in-depth kind of look on stuff. Um, so yeah, I tell you what, we've we've just paid for our um, Jet Black Geist and uh, what's the other one? Silver Lance. That's it. Pre-orders. So they're in and sorted. This is a very nice vending series, Cthulhu Ammonite. Uh Very very cool. I'm liking this a lot. Let's give this the zoom in treatment. There's more stuff back there that I'll crack into in a second. But yeah, and so we should get some of those promos in. I don't know if you guys saw, but the Celebi uh, V promo and the Sandaconda V, both alternate art promos, both stunning pieces of art, must haves, must haves for collectors. Um, so I'm hoping that we receive a couple of those with the boxes that we have pre-ordered. I'm very excited to see how many of those we get. Uh, but yeah, I'm seeing some nice cards already. I was looking for complete Scarage and Aquapolis. Uh, I couldn't afford to now. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? Is that, and I think also with that stuff is, especially around that era, given its rarity and how you know uncommon it was. Like seriously, that aside, the artwork in those sets is is top tier. Like it, it's very very hard to find a region or an era of cards that give you better artwork than those sets and i'm sure those cards are worth more in sentiment than any monetary value that could be slapped onto those um so yeah you, you're very lucky to have those in the collection and uh well, i suppose congratulations it's an incredible collector's piece cherish them forever um okay sitting on a gold mine <laughs> retirement money well i spent all my money on dream league cards yeah dream leagues absolutely popped off didn't it so Ven this, I believe this could all be vending series, which again, extremely underrated in my opinion. Uh, these all look in probably moderate play, uh, light play, moderate play. There's lots of whitening, but less other condition marks on them. But let's just appreciate the art. So we've got Ammonite, very nice. We've got a Graveler, the best Graveler to ever, ever grace the TCG. What beautiful art. We've got Farfetched. We have a Nidorino female. Or need arena, I should say. Uh, Dugong, gong, gong, ghastly. Very, very nice artwork there. Love that card. We've got a Kadabra, very nice. Then we have a Neo Discovery or Neo Two. I, was this one from the? This one wasn't from the Premium File because the Premium File one is the combined artwork of the other two evolutions from Gen Two. So this is from the regular set of Neo Discovery. Then we have, I believe, a Koro Koro Cleffer. I believe that was a Coro exclusive. We have Abra from Vending Series. Haunter from Vending Series. Very interesting artwork there. A Kangas Khan, the hand-drawn style. 
that the Pokemon TCG is synonymous for. Sometimes in, Jap in the uh, Japanese TCG, a lot of these never make it over to the English releases. So they're always really cool to see. Um, I love the little hand-drawn ones, especially ones that maybe have been done by kids and stuff like that. It's very, very cool. And speak of the devil, Arita, with this beautiful, beautiful Venomoth. Very nice. There is SM Pratt's favorite, that uh, Kamiya Voltorb. I know he's a big fan of that. I have no idea what this trainer is. I have no idea. I've already ordered the Celebi. I should have waited and got one from you. I'm already retired, but I don't want to sell my cards. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't want to either. I, it doesn't, I would find it so hard to get rid of some of my collection because like I said before, a lot of my stuff is worth far more in sentiment to me than the monetary value. And I tend to separate out my collection between personal stuff and things that I'm kind of willing to let go to fund the main collection goals and stuff and the stuff that sits on the side of collecting i would find really hard to to, to let go of it'd have to be a serious serious disaster there's a second farfetch there oh hello so that is a very very nice mewtwo there i believe we got this as a warner brothers promo for one of the movies in the english release very nice there is that pikachu very very cool another black star promo in english and we got whoopa Beautiful Ken Sugimori artwork there. It's not synonymous with the whole watercolor highlight style, iconic, just completely recognizable, unmistakable. Another Koro exclusive there. We've got a very, very interesting diamond encrusted Hitmon Lee from the vending series trainer. Interesting. Then we have flying Pikachu. Very, very cool. In not the best shape, but it is what it is. And then we've got uh, some vending series. Very nice, beautiful hollows on these cards. Uh, I believe there'll be a Snorlax behind here. There you go, Con. One of Connor's favorite Pokemon in the world, right there, Mr. Snorlax. But two CD promo hollows there. I would love for us to be able to secure, to secure a full CD promo set. That would be great. The amount people are charging for pre-order on the Celebi Altar Art is crazy. Yes, it is. And uh, it's... It shouldn't be that much. Um, I know the artwork's great on it, um, but what they're doing is that they, they, people who offer pre-orders on that stuff, they don't have it in hand, and they're also preying on people's FOMO. They know that people want to get it, get that order secured, but there will be availability after release. Ooh, two of those Gravelers, I'm intrigued. This is, my, this is one of my favorite cards from the vending series. I just love how Graveler is just having none of it. It's like just chucking, chucking stuff everywhere. It's awesome. And then anything's off, I believe, on that Sand Slash. So plenty of vending series there. So let's just take a look at some of the backs. So the conditions look okay. Some of them, are, you know, some of them look near mint. A lot of them airing on light play. And I imagine anything with creases and stuff and, and severe whitening, stuff like that. I mean, that's the far fetch. That is uh, heavy play to damage if there's any creases and stuff like that. More creases, you can see creases in the top corners there of those two, which is the Pikachu, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, nothing minty here. Vending series is so hard to grade. Plus, no one's buying anything to grade right now with PSA closed. It is what it is. But beautiful cards nonetheless and should be appreciated for their art. That's the best thing about these. So, I'm gonna go into this little binder here because we were talking about evolutions. So I believe that this is probably well themed. Aerodactyl is my favorite. Yes, that is a huge card. I love the artwork on that one. Very, very dynamic. Much better, much, much better than the artwork that we received in Fossil. I would have loved for them to include that in the, uh, the Fossil uh, English release. So, got a nice little binder here. Got a nice little Cresselia on the front or Cresselia and a Leafeon and Glaceon on the backs. This is a see-through binder. This is beautiful. Um, again, Japan knocking it out of the park with the way that you get to store your cards as well. They just, they just, they just get everything, don't they, guys? They just get absolutely everything. I hope you've washed all that Easter egg off your fingers. Yeah, no chocolate here. Washed my hands before. I ate about, t I've eaten two Easter eggs already. It's, it's so bad no restraint when it's in the house but i just don't buy chocolate so when i do buy it, i just ravage it so uh, we'll probably be similar to the alt arts in matchless they are coming down quickly yes 
because people just chart they they love at the moment. It's, it's first to market premium guys. Just just go read just read about it. It's it's very easy. It's whole supply and demand and until everyone opens stuff up and then the supply is there, the demand dwindles, price drops. That's that's just how it goes. Um okay. Should we have a look at this should we have a look at this binder? Ooh, okay, so I'm gonna go for Oh okay. Con, this is the legend hollow. So this is oh I, this is my oh god this Electabuzz is so so cool guys so cool look at this card look how cool that is it's not the best condition but I love this card and I love the legend symbol anything to do with Heart Gold Soul Silver is a big big one for me I think my 2022 collection goal my 2020 i'm going to postpone it to next year or well actually psa has dropped off the radar now so i could get rid of my psa goal for this year uh but it is i'm going to set my goal to get all of the heart gold soul silver cards from the tcg um that's that's a big one for me i just love the card style the kind of rustic border the artwork and it's awesome and heart gold soul silver is my favorite pokemon game ever released i mean Original gold and silver is, but the remakes did such a great job with so many quality of life improvements that I sunk so many hours into it. It was disgusting. But yeah, this is indeed a Tokia art or Tokia. Um, very, very nice. And then this Delcate obviously is an Arita as well. Like You can just tell from the art style. So an absolute stormer to begin with. And then we've got uh, Pichurisu or Pachurisu and then Riolu there, hollows, very, very nice. And we've got a Mothim and a reverse rare Coughing. So I believe there will be a lot of kind of Gen 4 era cards. Uh, and then this is what I'm talking about. Screw that Charizard. Look at that Victory Bell, man. Look how good that is. And look how good this Smoochum is as well. They're just beautiful, beautiful cards. Artwork is so good. The card style is amazing. It's just got everything. Aesthetically, it's just perfect. Uh, but yeah, and then we've got um, from Unseen Forces. I can, I, I can never remember the Japanese equivalent. Um, oh, you just bought that Delcati. The great... I mean, your Arita collection is incredible, by the way. Um, I always love seeing those, those tweets come up on the timeline, as I said earlier. Um, but we've got one of those beautiful double foil Japanese specials in this uh, Charizard, this Team Galactic's Charizard. Let's just pull this out and have a look at the old condition. A few bits of silver in on the edge. Um, a few marks. Top left looks like it's got some corner issues on most corners. Edges are not the cleanest on this card. And then a few bits of whitening and some pretty decent um, surface scratches and imperfections on the back there that you guys will be able to see just there. So... No minty mint Charizard there, unfortunately, but it's what it is. That's what you get when you purchase collections. You know, I mean, my my collection's no different from when I was a kid, really. You know, a lot of my stuff is not in great shape. So we've got a Weavile and a Soul Rock, very nice. More Hollows, very very good. Then we have Lapras, which is very very nice, and then Mantine as well. Let's have a look at how these reverses look. Yes, yeah, so there's a few scratches on these reverses. And that's just how it goes. So let's keep going with this binder. I might zoom this out actually so we can have a bit of a double page spread. I'm just trying not to catch the light. There we go. And is that all in shot? It is. That is good. That is good. Um, five stars here as well. What's going on? I haven't seen you in a while, Five Star. I hope you're doing well. And we've got Atlantis IRL. How are you doing? Welcome to the stream. I hope you are well. Oh my god, look at that Arita Bellossum. Oh my god. Just stunning. Beautiful, beautiful cards. This uh, this Bastiodon has had an absolute battering. Look at that. It's like someone's folded it in half, made a paper aeroplane out of it. It's a very, very nice looks ray, though. Very nice. So let's keep moving. I could be here all day otherwise, guys. This is the problem. Oh, we got Kabutops. Very nice. Spirit Tomb. Two Spirit Tomb Hollows. And then this Quagsire. This is one of my favourite hollows from the uh, L1 set. Very, very nice. And this Kabutops is very cool as well. Nice dynamic artwork on that. Oh, we've got two of those Quagsires. That's a win. That's a win. I might have to have one of those for my collection. Luminion, Meganium. 
very nice. Oh, great hollows in this. Uh, two rows of raids. Look at that, Azumarill. Stunning. I just love the um, the cloud pattern in the back. So two Saito artworks. So if you guys don't know, Kuki Saito, fantastic artist in the in the uh, Pokemon TCG, responsible for a lot of the Poncho Pikachu cards that you see a lot of people fanning over. And if Red is in the chat, and I don't know whether he is, but there's his boy Arcanine. And what's really cool on this, um, on the L1, the Heart Gold Soul Silver set, is that both the Nine Tails and the Arcanine have the Firestone in their artwork, which is really, really, really cool. Um, people are selling the Sloking Alt Art in Japan for so cheap. Yes, they are very, very cheap. Um, a lot of the other Alt Arts are. The, the Kamiya uh, Slowpoke, uh, Sloking is cheap. The Articuno is down to like 20. The Zapdos is cheap as well. Um, it's just the Moltres. There, oh God. This, this is the card that I was really excited to see. This Noctowl is so good. Look at this card. Uh, my favorite Shining out of all of the Shinings from Neo Destiny is Shining Noctowl. I just love the, I don't know what it is. I just, I just, Noctowl, I, resonate with for gen 2 and the cool thing about these cards as well is anyone catch it and they're like you see this little lip that runs up by the hp bar that divides the name that is also hollow on these cards there you go you can see that they're just stunning cards man like they nailed they nailed this era of cards they nailed it and the thing is with this as well is that you've got to remember the um that had also had prime cards then there was legend cards as well so they were stunning am i going the wrong way if i go that way i'm not so beautiful artworks here that Skarmory is very special, and that Metapod is nice, and then we have a Hollow Macargo as well. Uh, oh god, look at this. This Gyarados is so good. It's another Arita artwork. Um, it's just stunning. It's just so good. Uh, reverse Waylord. Politoed, one of my favourite Pokemon of all time. Uh, Frostlass, very, very cool. There we go. So I was telling you about that earlier. Oh, we've got another one of these uh, Gyarados as well. Um, there is Ninetales, again with a Firestone there. A beautiful touch. Very, very cool. Um, but yeah, two of those Arisa Gyarados with a beautiful swirl down by his face on this one. Stunning. I hope these are in uh, nice condition. I imagine they're probably around excellent to light play based on the rest of the binder that we've already seen. But nonetheless, it is still beautiful to see them. So... We've got the Lost Link Lucario, which is very, very nice. And then another uh, Lucario card. Uh, Frostlass and Leafeon. This might have been the first appearance of Leafeon. I can't remember. But I know the level X's were from back in the day, which is very nice. Oh, another one of those nine tails. Beautiful. And then Umbreon. Another Arita Umbreon on the roof. Is this the same Umbreon, guys? Let me know in the chat if you believe that it is. Uh, how much for the Gary? Lost Link Lucario is awesome. It is indeed. Uh, Bowen, drop us a... Uh, if I see something I'm interested in purchasing, should I DM, DM you? Of course, you can either contact me directly through my personal collecting account, which is Tojo, or you can go and head over to Villain Cards and DM us there. No problem at all. We're happy to give you any photos, anything that you want to anything you want to see. And uh, yeah, so just drop us a message if you're interested in something. Um, but this Umbreon is very nice. Um, I love how Arisa themes all of his Umbreons around that kind of church spire. Um, it's very, very cool. Really, really nice kind of series that links all of the artworks together. She's very, very cool. Here we go. So we have Porygon uh, Z, two of those cards. Very nice. You can see the uh, download, the drive that... Uh, I think that's the drive that allows him to evolve, possibly. Or it could just be a held item. I can't remember. That is a cool little touch. And then we have just, I mean, Arita's just everywhere today. There's Arita Flygon, which is not in the best of shape, but still the artwork is untouched and is beautiful. And this Flygon here has seen, <laughs> has seen better days. It is in rough shape. But that's just how it goes sometimes. Oh, hello. A very, very nice um, Blaziken there. And then a beat up Gardevoir, which is a shame to see. Uh, we've got Swampert and then a battered for Alligator as well, to be honest, um, from the Unseen Forces uh, side of the Japanese TCG. Uh, there is another <laughs> Arita special. I love this um, Infernape. It is a very, very cool card. And it's not often that you see him as a fighting type. A lot of his cards are indeed fire types. 
Um, very nice uh, Diamond Pulse starter cards there. God, it just keeps coming, doesn't it? Arita did so many artworks in this set. So Kingdra, and then we have the uh, Luke, uh, Luxray. Very, very nice. And then this is probably one of my favourite Gardevoir cards. I have this in my um, personal collection, Nishida uh, artwork. Um, very, very nice Gardevoir. And then an Electivire as well off on the side. God, this binder just keeps going, doesn't it? Oh, look at the boy. Don't fuckle with the shuckle. Beautiful art style on these two cards here. I'm a big fan of that. And we have two. We have two of the Sudowoodos. So I might have to claim one of these for myself. Sudowoodo is another one of my top 10 Pokemon. I love Sudowoodo. Um, it is beautiful. Uh, Connor says that he, he is on the um he is on the instagram connor connor sits and mans the dms whilst i do the stream um so if you guys want to have any more information on that stuff just let me know um, and if you guys if you want me to pull any cards out to take a look at like i said just just drop it in the chat um i'll, I'll pull that inferno out uh, so you can have a look so there is some silvering definitely you can see just the cameras catching this up on the top edge so I'm seeing silvering. There's a little bit of kind of wear up on that top corner. Let me see if I can catch the light. Come on. Where are you? Here we go. So I don't know if you can see anything up on this top edge here. So there's a few little edge lips. There is actually a, a kind of indent on the center of the card here. You can just see that just here. On the front side, there are some surface imperfections. The corners are not the cleanest. The edges is not the cleanest. And then the back, I imagine, will tell us a similar story, which it does. So there are some scratches and things like that, but all of this gets factored into the price, obviously. If you're looking to collect for the art, um, you know, we're not going to go ahead and charge you near mint prices and stuff. And all of our prices, anyway, they always be eBay stuff, like always. We're looking at, you know, we, we're very transparent in the fact that we, we buy these as, as ball clots and we get these for very good prices. So it's a really good kind of middle ground for both us and for everyone who buys cards from us that we can offer, you know, super competitive prices in that we make a nice cut and also you guys get a great deal as well. So yeah, but that Infernape is, I, I would say uh, from uh, on my standards, airs towards kind of light to moderate play um, because of that indent that's in the center of it. But a beautiful artwork nonetheless. Um, so let's get back to where I was. I've got no idea what the context is on this um, trainer here, but it does have the double hollow going for it, which is very nice, or that glitter hollow. Very nice. I am blown away by those pseudo Udos. I absolutely love those. Here we go, the boy. Look at him. Tyranitar, who has seen better days for sure. He is not looking in the best shape, and neither is that Garchomp either. And we have. Um, Agron, and then we have Garchomp as well, another Arita. Just Aritas everywhere. Arita artworks everywhere. Oh, there's, there's another one of those Garchomps, so two to choose from. And then we have uh, probably the main reason that why I looked at buying this collection. We have these um, LP Promo Shining uh, Doggos, so legendary dogs. Um, these came in the Call of Legends. They came as promos, I believe. The main set ones are part of the SL collection. I have those in English. I have the Raikou, at least, I know, with the hollow borders. Got like, like the EX is the lowercase EX cards. But they released as promos in English as well. And these released in a... It was like a folder that contained like three windows for the... And I, they might have come with uh, legend packs. I can't remember. I, I can picture the thing that holds the promos but i can't remember what packs came with them um but all of these have beautiful swirls on this raikou has one just to the right of his head there that you can see and then the entei has one just to the right of him just here and then the suicune has one just between his ribbon there what a swirl that is and these look in, in pretty decent shape probably on the air of light play and um, but i believe there are two sets two sets of those promos hopefully i'm hoping anyway we will see more later. There is the VS Jirachi. Very, very nice card there. Um, these are part of the VS collections or the, the, the sealed collections you could get. Uh, the movie commemorative packs. Um, VS never really made its way to English. We never really saw any VS. The multiple releases that they did over in Japan. Uh, we've got Regigigas. And then another Regigigas here. And then I believe we're going to start this second set of these uh, LP promos which are very, very nice. Thank you for showcasing it. No problem at all. You are more than welcome. 
and we have the second of the, the uh, Entei and Suicunes as well. No swirls to be seen on those ones. Um, wow, this dark right is absolutely ravaged. Look at that. And there's literally no point in this even bothering trying to sell that. I, I wouldn't feel comfortable selling that. Uh, another Arita for this Cresselia just here. Another very, very nice artwork there. Looking in very similar condition based on the front of that Infernape that I got out earlier. Oh, hello. And then we have the uh, LP Latias and Latios Hollows. Very nice joined artwork on these, as you can see displayed in this two pocket binder. Very nice cards. Um, they're beautiful. I've never seen these in person. I keep seeing them all over Japanese TCG sites, and I've, this is the first time I've seen them, and they are stunning. Very, very nice uh, colour and shade work on those cards. It's a nice little swirl on that Latias as well. I, I'm not just saying swirl for the hype, by the way. I'm a massive swirl addict. I, I love seeing hollow swirls. Um, on all of my Watsy stuff, I always prioritise getting a hollow swirl on a card rather than sometimes some better back condition. Because if you're just going to look at it in a binder, why does it matter anyway, right? So, yeah. Uh, there, are the, uh, there are those ridiculously rare English VS series cards. Yes. So, we did get a little showcase. Um, but they are super, super rare. Super rare. Uh, okay. So, we have... Uh, very. Look at the, how long the beak is on that Zapdos. Incredible. Uh, another Regigigas. And then a very cool Jirachi. I love this. This is a really, really nice um, Jirachi Hollow. This, this, this came in uh, EX Deoxys in English. Very, very nice. And then an Azelf down on the end there. So what are we finishing off the binder with? What else have we got? Last couple of pages. So we have a very nice Heatran. Very nice artwork. And then a Mewtwo as well. Um, a little bit underwhelming that artwork. I'm not going to lie for Mewtwo. They could have they could have done him a bit more justice there. Uh, Regigigas and then uh, Darkrai as well. Not looking in the best of condition those cards at all. And then going to finish things off with a beautiful looking Celebi. Back to that uh, Hot Gold Soul Silver, or in in Japanese they call it the Legend series, uh, Legend card style, which is just so nice. And then another one of those long beak Zapdos cards. So a beautiful binder of cards. Beautiful binder of Hollow. Uh, cards there anything you see guys please reach out to us let us know and we're happy to send over more photos etc etc so ben is here as well welcome to the stream ben i hope you are well mate it's good to see you uh did you get some good cards this evening mate we've got some incredible cards i don't know those latios and latios but i'd like to they are beautiful cards um I, I've, I'm trying to remember what commemorative pack they came in. I can't remember the exact... Um, oh, hello, what's going on here? I think this is just... I, this could just be bulk, potentially. I'm, I'm really not sure, but we'll have a look through. So much packaging on my floor already. So, so these just look like... Um, uh, Platinum Era Commons, which is fine. Absolutely fine by me. Beautiful routes. Um, oh, they're okay. Then they're, they're in group sleeves, so I've got to take these out and then put them back in afterwards. So let's just make a little sleeve pile. So we go. Starting things off with routes. Very nice. Another routes, and a curlier, and another curlier. Maybe these are themed. Maybe they're themed. I imagine they are. Let's see what's in this one here. Start things off with a Uxi or Uxi. I believe it's Uxi though. Uh, and I don't know what that is. That's where you go and catch Reggie Gigas, I believe. And then a potion down on the end. And no idea what that is. So some trainers. I imagine this was probably just their, the bulk of their collection. Oh, lovely Professor Elm there. Professor Elm's training method. Love that. And then that classic Ken Sugimori art style there on that trainer card. Very nice to see. Ooh. Oh, flipping heck. I've just, I've just unearthed a absolute manga. I don't know if you can see that under my face there. Snowpoint Temple. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Master Ball, Great Ball, Pokeball, and then Team Galactic. I've, is this Mars? Is that her name? I think it could be. Mars, Saturn, Jupiter. Uh, is Neptune one of the admins as well? I can't remember. Let's try and... Oh my god. Oh my god. Uh, oh, sh okay. Uh, I'm trying to do this in a in a reasonable order. Okay, let's let's do that. <laughs> I just unearthed 
some unbelievable cards there. I was just like, was not expecting to see those. So, a Porygon, very nice. Another Porygon too. Gligar, look at that Arita artwork. One of my favorites. Stunning there, Gligar climbing up the rock. Very, very nice there. And then a Gallade as well. So, uh, next up, I believe, okay, so this is single sleeved. So we have a Gliscor, I believe, or Glys, Glys, ah, come on. Is it Gliscor? So there's Gligar and then Gliscor, I believe. Um, evolution card, very nice from the Diamond and Pearl era. Really nice hollow pattern on those. Love that they bring the Galaxy Force back. We have Porygon Z as well. Very nice hollow foil on that one as well. These are looking in uh, quite nice condition. There are some indents just on the top. You can see, I don't know if I can catch that on the light. Let's get that. You see that just there? So yeah, not the not perfect, not perfect. Then this Mewtwo makes a return. There you go. It's the one that I was saying earlier that the, the uh, art could be a bit better. And I am 100% still of that opinion. Um, and there's lots of surface imperfections with these. Look at all of that stuff there. And this is why, guys, you've got to be careful. When you buy on eBay and stuff, like, look how easy it is for me to make that look near mint. If I just hold a flat photo like that, don't do anything, you can't see anything on that card unless unless the camera's really good quality and you, hide, you, you, know, you deep inspect it. But it only takes a little bit of this and it's just go, the price just drops to the floor. So... You know, like I said, we're always going to be transparent about condition on stuff when you ask to buy things. Uh, right. And then we've got some English cards, which is always interesting to see in Japanese. But I believe these are, uh, these could be pre-release. Um, pre-release for uh, the Platinum series. So Glaceon and Leafeon. Uh, this Leafeon is horrifically centered. Look at that. That's horrendous. And then the Glaceon, the centering is nice. But there are some really, really nasty uh, condition bends and stuff in the bottom. Uh, this one isn't well centered either. It's actually just as bad because obviously these will all be cut from the same sheet. So you can see how they line up in terms of border and centering. But very nice to see. I mean, it's always good to see some English kind of pre-release cards, which is nice. Uh, what Bandai did you get? The question for each of him for me is how to get the beat at ones. Uh, sometimes the quest for each. I, I, uh, is that did I read that right or am I being to be the quest for each of him for me it means having to get the beat at one sometimes so I don't think I quite understand that maybe I'm just reading that wrong that's what happens sometimes in the heat of the moment when you're on the chat anyway right so we've got beautiful God of War EX from EX Sandstorm I, again forgive me I'm just going to say the English set names because I, I can't ever remember the, the Japanese ones because they're normally quite extravagant so very nice there um, but it is a little bit beat up you can see what I say a little bit a, a lot of it beat up not not great condition there uh this however looks really clean so this is a box topper so if you ever see any cards in japan with this little uh the little gift box symbol it normally means that it came off the top of a box so either a premium collection like a collection box or a booster box uh, and look there's a beautiful swirl on that mew to go with the swirl of mew and um, but the pikachu gold star and the mewtwo gold star were both included as box toppers in japanese release so don't get caught in the whole oh my god that's so cheap which sometimes the japanese sellers try to get you caught out with because they're a lot more expensive in the english release and very very cheap in comparison in japan let's have a look at the back of this one and this looks beautiful it looks immaculate, this card. I'm gonna take this out of the sleeve. This justifies a non-sleeve inspection, I believe. Uh, this card is, from what I can see, naked eye without zooming in and getting my uh, kind of LED close up and doing my whole pre-grade system. This looks immaculate, this card. Can't see anything. There is a few, actually, yes, I can see a few marks, uh, some pinhole dents there, and this is why you have to get up close sometimes. Just up here, see, they're almost like pinpricks, like something's probably got into the sleeve, that's how that stuff happens, and then they get pressed up, and that debris moves around a bit and then presses in a new spot. It's always like sand or uh, a little bit of food or debris or something, but yeah, just indents. That's the main thing on the back of here is indents, and there's some something going up in the top corner just up here somewhere that you, I can't quite get on camera. But the front is beautiful. 
nothing wrong with the front on that card there. I'm very happy to see a card like this coming in this condition. Um, you know, in the grand scheme of things, this is phenomenal uh, in terms of some of the stuff that you buy from Japan when you purchase collections. So that is a great card. That is a great card. Uh, the search for every Mewtwo, yes. Yeah, I'm a big fan of that Mew card as well. It's a beautiful artwork. And then we have Clay Doll, which looks in a very, very similar condition in terms of front. But look how much hollow is on this card, guys. Just look at that. Have we got a double swirler? Is that a double swirl? Oh, we do not. I thought we did. We do have one swirl down on this right side. Jesus, this card looks outrageous in person. I, ca I can't believe how good this looks. There's so much hollow fall. I'm hoping the camera's catching. I believe it is. It looks good when I look at the monitor. It looks real good. But look at those. And this is why the EX era is so special. You're never going to get another first Nintendo era of cards. And again, this one has does have some surface imperfections, as you can see on the back, indents and things like that. And this normally just comes from neglection of, of you know storage. Uh, you know, especially if these are childhood cards. Um, but yeah a few dents and dings and stuff like that which pushes this into the kind of excellent territory I would say probably not quite light play just because there's such a lack of whitening and other issues but yeah a lot of that stuff we're you know we're totally up front with when we list the cards but that is a beautiful example of almost a near perfect binder card for me that is stunning so next up we have another Gardevoir card which is Gardevoir level X beautiful card um honestly they took a little break after the uh first nintendo era during gen 3 they sacked off uh, lowercase EXs for the level x's which was interesting i thought and then they just returned straight back again so <laughs> they gave it a little bit of a break and then xy they thought yeah you know what we're bringing back EXs. so that guard of y is looking beautiful uh, a few little bits of whitening, but otherwise very similar condition to those previous EXs. We just saw there might be some surface stuff on the back. Um, I'll take a deeper look, and then when we end up listing those, you'll see this, see uh, those details and descriptions and stuff like that. Uh, but you see Level X as well. Very nice artwork on this. like this a lot, and in very nice shape as well. Maybe a little bit more whitening and some more obvious kind of surface condition problems on that card there. And then ending things off with a Porygon Z, which does have a dent up in the top left corner. You can just see that caught in the light just up there. Um, but nonetheless, very, very nice in terms of just pure hollow indulgence on these level X and EX cards. Just look how much hollow is on there. Look at that. Absolutely blinding. So, very, very nice cards there. Uh, I'll just pop those to the side and then we'll get into this back one. And guys, this is just the start. I mean, the <laughs> the stuff that I've got to crack into in a second is, is, is going to be mega. It's going to be going for a while. So we've been going about an hour now, guys, so thank you to everyone who's tuned in, everyone who's in the live chat right now. I appreciate you stopping by on the Tuesday evening. I hope you're all having a wonderful day. Uh, love the clay doll. A sentence I've never, I never have said. Yeah, I know, clay doll is one of those interesting Pokemon. Um, I think the, is it, is it this one or is it another one? It is this one, yeah. I, the reason why I like that clay doll is it's just so outrageous. Like it's just using hyper beam. It's just like gunning things down. It's so cool. I think dents can be treated too harshly by grading companies in terms of how they affect the appearance of the card. Hello there, Zay. How are you doing? Thank you for this. I'm really entertained and also jealous. Oh, the pleasure is all mine. Don't you worry. I, I require no thanks. I enjoy doing all of this just as much as I hope everyone else w enjoys watching it. Um, you know, I, I love going through these collections. And get, you know, I get to get my hands on cards that I realistically couldn't justify splurging on myself. So it's always good to kind of get things in and have a look at cards. So I'm going to unwrap all of these. Cling Film makes a return. Uh, I see a Pokey Park. What is going on here? But yeah, Zay only just got the notification. YouTube's rubbish for sending out notifications. It's really hard for small channels. They really don't do a good job of, of sending out content. Um, I miss loads of people's stuff. You know, I mean, 
To be honest, I don't have a lot of time to watch YouTube stuff. I wish I had a lot more to, you know, support my friends and other creators that I work closely with and, you know, people that engage in our stuff as well. Um, but, but it would just be made so much better if YouTube didn't constantly, you know, tell me that Leon Hart's uploaded a new video of Pokey Rev. It's like, I've watched all of their stuff. Oh, I'm excited about that one. I've watched all of their stuff all the time. I don't want to see their videos anymore, YouTube. I don't, you don't need to suggest their content to me. They've got the reach they need. Give me my friend's stuff that I actually spend watch time on. Anyway, that's a conversation for another day. More packaging out the way. I'll save that one in a sec, because I want to take a deep look at that one. That's a special one. This is a special one for me and Connor. This is one that we purchased for the business specifically for us. Uh, oh, hello. Okay, which, I don't know. Let's do that, let's do that, and let's do these. These sleeves are interesting, guys. Look at these. Look at these. So, Pokey Park with these interesting sleeve borders. So, we got a Wisma. We have another Munchlax. So, guys, we still do actually have uh, some of these sealed from last time. I sold a few, um, but we still do have some of these Pokey Parks sealed. Um, so, yeah, very nice cards. Still got this Lugia, the big boy Lugia. Um, if someone doesn't end up snapping him up, by the time that I finish dealing with this house purchase, I will have the funds and I will be buying that one sealed. I will not mess about, guys. Um, so, yeah. We've got Munchlax. Then we have one that we have not seen yet, Con. So this is very nice. We've got a Latios. Very cool to see that. Celebi. These sleeves really elevate the cards. Very, very nice. Uh, I'm getting notifications from a rubbish investor I don't even like or something. Yeah. You might one day get a copy of my Grail card. Not seen it yet. Ooh. I wonder what that is. I look forward to hunting through Japanese uh, listings, making random purchases to maybe one day find that grail card that'll be a good moment uh mudkip so more um mcdonald's promos trico uh, latios latias and torchic down on the end so we purchased a couple of the mcdonald's promos a few lots because we had quite a lot of interest um so we were happy to purchase more of those just to get some more a uh, more availability out to the people who were inquiring about it oh interesting so we've got some extras so these are from s3a which is a legendary heartbeat one of my favorite japanese modern sets uh released very nice i'm one card off completing the master set which is the togekiss vmax rainbow rare which i keep seeing all over japanese sites and never buying because i just constantly can't justify spending the shipping i need to buy enough personal stuff to ship it all out anyway mewtwo from sm12a so this is the tag all-star so not the miracle twin hollow and then we have articuno very nice cards i love these hollows from uh, tag all-stars and they were bundling together off the back of this wonderful sleeve very very cool and i wonder what this is oh rayquaza ex and this is from the uh, rayquaza theme deck i'm hoping this is in beautiful condition it looks like it was on the listing and me and connor have been searching for one because these are very hard to find in nice condition but this is one of those ex cards that has that double hollow pattern guys which just hits differently so you've got the galaxy foil and then you've got like the crescent foil that's what i call it anyway the crescent moon foil over the top but this is a beautiful ray bay card um there are a couple of things on the corners as i can see in the edges and i'm hoping the back is relatively clean which it is uh, there are some kind of surface dirt which you can see just here but i can clean that off easily easily i can clean that off i'll get my microfiber out sort that out something up with the corner up in the top and some of the edges aren't quite as clean as i would like but this is much, much cleaner than a lot of these Rayquazas that I'm seeing on these Japanese sites. So I'm very happy to see this guy make an appearance into our inventory. So I'm going to use one of these big sleeves to bundle those hollows up because they are very nice to have. Will not complain at having extra hollows, especially when the artwork looks like this. I mean, come on. Cannot complain at that. So, this sounds odd, but I don't actually know where your shop is. Aha! So we don't actually have one yet. So, I'm working on a website right now. Um, so, we do have an eBay store. So, Villain Cards on eBay. You can go and check that out. But everything else we deal at the moment, personally, which isn't great. I, I appreciate that. Um, but this is just how things are. This is, this is how we've had to kind of get things all started up. And we are working on it. But we do have a website. 
um, that is in the works at the moment. So hopefully that will be sorted as soon as possible. But if you do, uh, like I said, if you are interested in any of the cards, like I said, DMs is the best way to reach us. And then we deal everything like through PayPal. All of our shipping is, you know, we never take non-goods and services. So everyone's always covered. And then the shipping as well, we always send uh, via some kind of registered um, Royal Mail service. So you always have peace of mind of knowing that it has been shipped and it's in transit basically to you if you want tracking and things like that. More than happy to sort that out. Uh, so, I don't know what's going on here. These look like some extras. I like that fan pee a lot. Very, very nice. Very cute artwork. We have a uh, Galarian Meowth and then Anessa with uh, her Dreadnought, which is very cool. I believe they're from Astonishing Vault or... Yeah, is it Astonishing Vault? I think they are. And then oh, we've just got more of them because you just can't get enough of them. But these beautiful character uh, rare Pikachus. Uh, the character arts for me are pretty much the highlight of the Sun and Moon era. Um, the tag team alternate GXs are phenomenal cards. Um, however, they are spread throughout multiple sets. So they, in my opinion, have higher availability, less exclusivity. Whereas these were true, true one-offs and they are beautiful. Um, this is exactly what the, the you know the TCG should be doing. It should be making more cards like this, artwork centric. So we have four of these, and they are all in beautiful condition based on a quick scan. Let's just get one. Oh, they're in profits, which I hate to get out. So let's just get one out. They look in great shape. Beautiful. Uh, top edge. There may be a couple of. It could be just the. It could just be a dull cutter. That's what happens sometimes. Or I could just be seeing something. I'm not sure. Uh, but look, they look really clean. Uh, the top on this one looks a bit frayed, which, like I said, could be a dull cutter, um, or could just be because of the way they've been stored. And the reason why I don't like these profits is, guys, you can see there's really no clearance on the top of this card. So if anything comes down here, it's very easy for it to just push the sleeve out of the way and start to dent the top. So, so I always recommend just Ultra Pro standard fit sleeves because you get all the clearance on the top that you need. Um, and if you are going to use Profit, um, double sleeve for the win. Profit one way, regular top load, uh, regular sleeve the other way. Perfect, perfect. Um, uh, what's what's the word? Protection. That's what I was looking for. Perfect protection for your cards. Right. Uh, at the moment we're Instagram and eBay based. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Will that be on eBay, the Pikachu and Red? Yes, it will be. It will be indeed. I, I well, I speak I speak for Connor here because he's normally the one that does the eBay stuff. Um, but I imagine it will be. So I'm going to cut into this. So this will not be for sale, guys, unless it's in horrific condition. But the, I, I'm pretty sure this will not be for sale. This is a villain special. This is a little treat that me and Connor decided to. Um, give ourselves and I can't get into this how the hell did they get this in here what are they playing at why would you do this mysterious Japanese collector justify this choice that you have made this is terrible what the hell right I had to cut this the top of this resealable bag off like this and then I can't get it out because the top load is jammed because of the seal. So I had to cut in this side. At least it's well protected. At least it's waterproofed and it's in a top loader. Um, and the reason we bought this was because of the condition. Connor, I think you know, I think you know what's coming. I believe anyway, I think you can probably guess. But I'm gonna take this out and we're gonna have a proper look at this. I'll see that later. That's going in the bin. I don't need to reseal that reseal because I've destroyed the seal. Nice little side loader from Japan. I love the side load top loaders. And then we have a sleeve. And we have, behind here, hey, Meowth with the beautiful little villain logo. As you guys know, Meowth is kind of, allegedly is what we've done. <laughs> I don't know if we can say that because the ISP stuff. Um, but we've branded our stuff around with this coin. And as soon as I told Connor about these black and white era secret rares, he was like, ah, this is a perfect example of the double sleeve goodness. So we've got a deck sleeve, and then inside, 
have a profit sleeve. Very good. And have they done it? They have. And they've even sleeved it the right way around. Perfect double sleeve execution from whoever this Japanese collector is. Right, I've got to warm my hands up. So I've got to be, I'm, I'm intending for us to send this off to grade. So I've got to be very careful here. So you're about to see grade mode Tojo activated. So what I normally do is I slide a finger down the back like that and a pro fit. So I'm not bending, I'm not putting any, this is just pressure from the sleeve guys. So my finger can stay here all day if it wants. I'm just gonna pull it out like that using just, just the grip of my finger. I'm not putting any pressure on the card. I should pull it out like that. So, oh my God, Connor, this card is beautiful. <laughs> so as you can see guys, there's a stunning glitter foil uh, pattern on this card. This is very, very nice. It looks very clean. I'm not seeing anything on the card. So I'm gonna look naked eye on this one because it looks so, oh God, it looks so good. I don't see any scratches, nothing really in the top corners, I don't think. Corners look clean. Let's have a look at the back. Please have no scratches. So, there might be some dirt on that top top side there. And there might be some stuff on that top edge, potentially. Everything else looks pretty good from what I can see. Maybe a few bits of dirt that could very well be cleaned off. Con, this looks good. We've done a good job. We've chosen a good seller here. Um, so for those of you that don't know, the black and white era had a tendency with its secret rares to print either uh, set symbols or um, type symbols or special, or just special symbols on the secret rares. So they did it with this. And so this is from um, Black and White 2, which is the red collection. And then uh, they also did a very similar secret rare with Pikachu, where it had a electric bolt on the, so I'm gonna just double sleeve this the right way as well, just to make sure. There we go. Beautiful. So that may also save. I'm gonna put that back in the side loader. Um, but yeah, two very cool secret rares. And then the uh, black and white secret rares that you see in the later sets also have like dragon symbols and things like that on the bottom and a beautiful texture work on them um, that is 100%, 100% nowhere near as good in the English releases. Guys, it's not just a modern thing. Japan has been smashing it out the park since way back. They've always had the superior quality, always. Right, I'm gonna have a drinks break and then we're gonna get into the big stuff. And get into the big stuff. I do, it better be minty mint. <laughs> Off to PSA 2022 to return in 2024. Yeah, you're not wrong. I have a, um, I've got a, a, a block of cards just ready to go that I'm not even bothered about selling them. Like they're, they're literally my personal, like my personal grades that I want to get graded. Um, I think that's just the way it is. So the next package is this. It's a heifer. Look at all this. Um, it's a big one. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna rotate that so I've got a bit more space. Put these at the back. And let's get into this. So, what is in here? This was a, a complete collection purchase from clearly a vintage collector in Japan. They've got a load of original era hollows and regular set cards. And we just bought all of them because I wanted them. So, we're about to make our way through. Uh, I've got a weasel. I need to get graded. <laughs> As much as that would be cool to have a pot one Weedle, Vici, I would not recommend spending the money to send a cotton cart like that off. But then again, sometimes, you know, grading is about sometimes the sentimental value behind cards. And I've definitely looked at grading cards that I associate certain memories with them. Uh, because for me, a PSA slab or a BGS slab is a perfect way to encapsulate and protect that thing for a long period of time. Um, you just pay the premium for the grade and you have to wait, which is fine. But some of those ultra pro uh, magnet, um, like magnet 
uh, cases would probably do just as good a job. I believe they've got UV protection on them. Um, but yeah, I think I think that would be a that would be a, a good enough reason to send something off to grade. Better than a lot of people I know that send stuff off. Um, sometimes you know you definitely get people. Oh my god! See, this is the problem. Like, so again, so you've got this elastic, the dreaded elastic bands, and then there's an elastic band on top of that. Why would you do that to a dark Charizard hollow? Why? I think that's just a stack of hollows. Oh, no. Why would you do this to cards? No, never put elastic bands on things. Would it have killed you to buy some resealable bags, mysterious Japanese collector person? Oh God, they're all the hollows. Okay, right, I'll save those till a little bit because we might find some more in a second. So I'm gonna unbox all of this and then we can go ahead and look through. <laughs> For the banter, <laughs> it's going next day. Full premium service, no expense spared for the Weedle. No, I'll rate that. Um, paint, yeah. This is just the thing though, isn't it? Is that uh, you've got no idea how this person was storing the cards before this though, so God knows what they were doing. But, oh God, that's, that's some spicy pile that is right there. Um, I don't know if we've even got enough sleeves to deal with the uh, hollow mass that I've just seen. Um, so there's those, and then there's this as well. So I'm gonna put these up on the back, trying to have some sort of system here, because uh, this was a big purchase. So there is like a whole, <laughs> whole nother bag as well. <laughs> uh, not selling anything to CGC. That is an interesting question. So. Uh, I've grown up with CCC, as in my uncle is a huge comic book collector, he loves Spider-Man and has always had graded comics. And it's where a lot of my kind of collecting instincts and habits come from, is seeing his collection and my cousin owning figures, trading cards, you know, every, every, everything like that. Um, so, you know, I would, I, I would censor, I would send stuff to CGC. The problem that I have is that at the moment, I don't think I really want to send anything off because if PSA can't handle it, like what, like tell me why CGC isn't going to suffer exactly the same problem within the next two month time frame. Like <laughs> it's, it's just going to happen. So realistically, like, I believe most of the people who are in a rush to grade things are the people who are in a rush to try and recuperate some of the money that they might have invested in the short term. And this isn't like a, like a flex thing, ego thing or whatever, but I only ever spend money that I'm willing to lose on the investments that I put on in Pokemon. And also, I'm not here for the short term, I'm here long term. I love this hobby, I love the collections, I love the artwork. Pokemon's been a part of my life for, you know, 20 plus years. I'm not leaving now just because some prices drop or some people buy all the products off the shelf. It's not what I'm about anyway. So I'm not in a rush to send anything off. So I don't need to go to CGC, I don't need to go to the UK grading surface, I don't need to rush. And I'd advise everyone else to not to do the same as well. If you think you're gonna be around, if you think you're gonna be sticking things out, just keep the cards in your collection. Just look at them, appreciate them. And then when the time comes, when things calm down, if you do want to send them off, you can do it then. No problem. Uh, the rubber bands are hurting me. Yeah, can't fully start collecting until I finish school. Well, Bowen, that's exactly what I was like. You know, I finished university in 2018. I want to say um, and so I've only really had like a consistent income for the past three years so I've built more collection stuff recently been building you know making the right decisions building certain 
uh, you know, collections or, or doing certain things. Like, I mean, I've been to Japan every year since I had a job, um, just for like a holiday with my partner, Laura, or the sleeve master, as some of you will know. Um, spent hundreds, <laughs> spent thousands whilst I was in Japan on cards, things like that. And so it's only really recently where I've like kind of settled down and started like being more careful with the money because I've just been enjoying it. And that's just what happens sometimes. So let's get rid of these freaking rubber bands. My God. Uh, I think that they will suffer like PSA, but they, I, I think they're a nice alternative, perhaps for a short while before they inevitably close to for modern cards. Yeah, but what, what's your justification? This, this is what I'm saying. Like, why, why do you want to send off a modern card? Like, what's the, what's the inherent need to have that card graded like right now? Which I think a lot of people are grading just because, oh, you just grade it. You open it, you crack it, you grade it, and that's how it works, right? And it's just like, well, no. Like, t tell me why you want that card slapped. Like, if you're not adding any value to it in terms of, or it's not rare, or there's like, what, there's no need to send that off. Um, which is why we kind of have the backlog that we have now, because of that, essentially. <laughs> Um, but you know, like that's not me saying that you, sh you shouldn't be great and you shouldn't be do like do you know do what you want. It's fine. Um, is it not worth paying that bit more for Beckett's? Do you think only on black label? And you know, for me, like I'm a sucker. I'm a sucker for a black label. I'd lo I'd love to have some black labels in my connection. Would love to have that. Uh, so we've got some nice little fossil cards here. Um, but yeah, black labels are stunning. Oh, hello, nice little neo pseudo wudo there. Uh, nice rocket cards there. Neo, lovely. Uh, oh, Jim. Hello. Oh, some of these are like in really nice condition. Very, very nice. Iconic there. Beautiful Brox Golem. Um, oh, these are so good. Lots of very similar cards, but that's just what it is. That's what you get from the Watsi era. Ooh, that is a vending series Hitmon chair. Very nice. That is a Coro Coro Onyx. Very nice exclusive. Uh, and I believe we're just going to get a load of energies down the back. Oh, nice. Another Coro exclusive or deck exclusive. I think that's a deck exclusive because uh, it's not glossy. It's normally the rule that I go by. Um, but yeah, Beckett, de like, definitely go for it. Like, if you think you're going to get a black label, go for it. Um, for me, CGC, Beckett, the subgrades are a must-have on some of these cards that are going to start to have much higher populations. Because realistically, how many people are going to be cracking PSA 10 vintage cards when PSA is renowned for having, you know, a little bit of leniency on 10s? You know, they always say, oh, you can have like one mark and it will still get the 10. Which means, why would anyone send that to a service that offers subgrades that's going to automatically pull them down from the 10 or the prestigious 10 to a 9.5? Um, you know, no one's going to do that, are they? So, okay, there's no um, energies in this pile. Uh, so some very nice, uh, we've got more kind of vintage, original era and gym sets, rocket, fossil. Very nice. There's that squirrel from Rocket. Iconic. Lovely. Um, nice. That is another deck exclusive, I believe. Um, you could, so guys, just so you know what I'm talking about when I say a deck exclusive, just like this. The reason why you can tell here is because there's no set rarity. Um, so that normally means... So this will have either come from the Hanada uh, City theme deck, which is... Um, Hanada is Cerulean City in Japanese. That's what they call it, Hanada City, I believe. Um, and this came in the theme deck box in Japanese, which is where the hollow gym cards came from in gym, which is very nice. Ooh, Vending Polly just chilling it in there. Very nice little treat for us. Love that. That's a, that's a nice card, that is. Another deck exclusive, I believe. Very nice magic card. Whoopa. Nice. Beautiful cards. Uh, uh, let's, I've got to catch uh, that, one, <laughs> that one lone grass energy yeah that was on the end of the fire ones 
yeah that was funny if i get a good condition japanese base uh chiming in yes i will keep an eye out the weedle's off to beckett then. <laughs> the cards i'll be sending to cc will be mainly cards that i've bought to sell but i'd like to get a so-so pikachu in a perfect 10 for my personal collection okay well i would say that in the next few months you've got to ask yourself the question how long are you prepared to hold that capital in those cards if you're having to sell those cards uh, how long are you thinking about holding on to them uh, and if you send them off to grade essentially how long that is a lovely card that's a beautiful Arita special there it's one of my favorites from rocket right there um how long are you willing for the grading company to hold your card for because if you're buying with the mentality to sell surely that card has gone up enough as is already if it was a good investment as a raw copy um, we're entering uncharted territory now with with grading stuff and the thing that i would say and i have already capitalized on before all of this grading backlog started happening was i've sold all of the modern cards that have had big gains because I just believed that they were way too overpriced. I made big profits on them, and the point is, is that I don't, I didn't want to pay Express to get them graded, and I was pretty damn aware that these cards weren't going to be coming back anytime soon. And so, when they come back, how many are going to be in the pop report? How much, you know, how much competition is there going to be for me to sell that card along with other people? And why would people buy mine? Oh, hello, Charmander. Beautiful. Very nice. Are we going to see any Charmeleons? We might well do. Oh, we've got a dark Charmeleon there. Rapidash. Another dark Charmeleon. Look at the ink quality difference between that one there and that one. So much darker this one is. Uh, but yeah. You know, how long are you willing to have that locked up? And if you're buying to sell, why don't you just sell now? Because the point is, is that when the grading circle shut, PSA shuts, Beckett shuts, very nice deck exclusive nine tails there. Um, you know, I'm already seeing people on Facebook groups and eBay go, "Oh, the, I'm selling some stuff from my grading pile because I can't send it off." Very nice, Blaine's Charmeleon there. Love that. Oh, nice deck exclusive Growlithe. Lovely. Another Charmeleon. God, no Charmeleons. Come on, we're looking for a Charmeleon. They're minty, those cards there. On the end, another Blaine's Charmander. You know, because what happens when all of these people start selling off their grading piles? Because there's an abundance of modern. So if you're selling modern cards or you're looking to grade modern cards, what happens when every person who had a Pikachu VMAX in their grading pile, oh, there is a base Charmander, but it is not mint. That is also not mint. Um. Flareon, love that artwork. Um, yeah, what happens then when all of them come onto the market at the same time? That looks pretty good. It doesn't look perfect, but it looks pretty good. We'll take a deep look at that in a second. Oh, I just love that charm in It's so good. Uh, you know, and, and for me, that just means it's undercut city time, baby. Everyone's just going to be going, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll undercut, undercut, undercut. But I could be wrong. I could be wrong. But most of the time I haven't been wrong yet with this market stuff. Um, let's have a look at this Charmeleon. Uh, it's not mint. Which is a shame. Top left. Ding. But binder card. Yes. Yeah, surface stuff on the back as well. You can see if I can just grab the light there. But yeah. I mean, guys, to be honest... <laughs> I am known to be a bit of a cynic when it comes to like Pokemon cards. It's just the way that I am. I'm fiercely, um, I'm fiercely like superstitious slash kind of. I, I don't know. Like I'm constantly thinking about what's what, where the market's going next, what the movement is. Uh, very nice uh, tangle. I believe that's a band art because of the uh, blackface jinx there. Very nice cards. I'm going to be going through this for flipping ages if I if I keep going at this speed. Nice Nida Queen there. Uh, beautiful Ivysaur. Lovely. Oh, I love that. Erica's Ivysaur. If that's in here, that is one of the best cards ever released, in my opinion, in the TCG. 
It's a beautiful artwork. One of the best. So I'm hoping to see one of those. Oh, Sugamori Arbux. Love that. Pincer Victory Bell. Nice. Lots of gym in here, which is great to see. Look at that Scyther. Stunning. Uh, I am missing some gaps in my complete gym set. So this could have some cards that I might even grab myself, potentially. This is going to be hard. Oh, just look how much, just look how many cards there are. Just so many. Lots of those Bulbasaurs, which is nice to see. Band Grimer. Yeah, they might be. I'm looking for it. I know all the band cards. I'm looking for them. Very nice. Oh, cool Kakuna. Very cool. Just random energies. What are you doing in here? Get out of here. Let's put that on the energy pile. Off they go. Very nice need arena. Yeah, no upskirt grimers as of yet. From what I can see. There might be one that creepy oddish. Zubat. More Zubats. Nothing there, but there is another stack here of uh, grass cards. There was a few, you missed them. Oh wait, what? Did I? <laughs> in the last pile there was, brilliant. There you go guys, I'm, so, I'm, I'm getting too caught up in being an Aggie collector and telling you guys to stop flooding PSA and stuff. I'm sorry, I do rant sometimes, it's just the way that I'm built. I'm just trying to do my best to protect people and like try and give them like my thoughts on stuff because I think some people just kind of hurt this bit. There you go. Spotted that one. <laughs> Very nice. Um, love to see the band artworks. They're very common, so I'm very surprised that they fetch the premiums that they do. But another thing that they do, very nice, like this. This is another deck exclusive, I believe, and along with this uh, Victory Bell there. Very nice cards. So yeah, this, so, okay. Deck, no rarity. Regular set, rarity. So guys, if you see someone tell you no set symbol on gym is first edition. It's it's doo doo. Don't mean nothing. It's because it's from the theme decks. Because that's the only way that they could distinguish the cards. Nice little base set ball by there. Oh, Neo Gen Shikaria. Lovely. So very nice uh, cards. So obviously, you guys, based on these cards that you're seeing now, you'll probably be able to guess another band Tangler there. Nice. Oh, another nice Scyther. I know Scyther's Den will be very happy to see those. Um, we're almost halfway in the bulk, which I'm more than happy to look through. But guys, if you want me to go a bit quicker or to just skip over this, then just say, but I'm enjoying looking through these very much. Lots of Nostalgia Bayleaf. Lovely. Grime. Nice. I love this artwork, along with the Abra that they do on top of that... Um, that clock tower spire i love it it's so good true nostalgia true true nostalgia gloom is very nice as well another arita special there weedle lovely lovely uh, when i say modern i mean mostly japanese promos from 2016 to 2010 i'm not sending cards which or i don't think will be flooding the market but i do understand what you mean in terms of it being a bit risky at the moment yeah i mean i mean this is the thing it's, it's you know pr promo cards sometimes have deceptive availability and that can run both ways you know um if you're talking like grand prix illustrated charizard and stuff uh, don't bother you know like red's pikachu took four years to realize in price so that gives you an idea of kind of what what we're gonna have to wait until i'm gonna move this over here so i have this ready no go through them Love watching these guys. Wow, that's fine by me. I love watching them too. Wow. Look how good that Mareep is. And I got two of them. <laughs> Beautiful. Stunning cards, man. Oh, there he is. Hold on, that's no rarity. What? Is this a deck exclusive? Or is this base no rarity? 
I'm putting that to the side. I don't know enough, just as a disclaimer, on base set, I don't know enough about base set non rarity. Um, but that could be cool. Um, that could be a big card, I don't know. Uh, yes, Koro Koro, Electabuzz, love that. Very, very nice. That's another one of those Mareeps, that's, that's stunning that card is. How good is that? How good is that? Jungle Pikachu, very nice. That's a base no rarity, yeah. Gotta have a keen eye for this stuff. Um, I imagine there's probably a lot of other base that I've whizzed past that has no rarity symbol as well. But yeah, that's a nice, um, that's a nice little find there. Another deck exclusive there, beautiful. See, that one does have the rarity symbol. Uh, that is a, I, a promo of some sort. I can never remember um, where that one came from. Uh, but we've got two of them. Lots of Pikas. Lots of Pikachus. There's that Jolteon. Very nice. Raichu. A lot of these from uh, theme decks. Oh, that one would have been a nice nice one to be in no rarity. It was in much better condition. Another Koro Koro. So many base Pikachus. So many. Loads of them. I've still got more to go through on this pile. Let's just move that one to the side. Right, I hope you're all doing... You guys are still with me. It's been almost... We're almost at the two-hour mark. It's beautiful to see people still interacting in the chat. And we're kicking off things with a very, very nice flying Pikachu, which has some whitening in the top corner, but that is nice to see nonetheless. Surfing Pikachu and another flying Pikachu. Wow. Very nice. Love those cards. So I've got a feeling we're going to see more Pikachus. So if we see more base cards, got to keep an eye out for that no rarity. And I, <laughs> I say that as we hit the energy wall, the sea of lightning energies, which is fine. That's what happens when you buy these collections. Remove the next set of rubber bands. Oh, what a crime. I would like that nice condition Pikachu. I will, if you let me know, what you're after. I will set aside all of the decent condition ones that I'll find and I'll send over more photos and stuff so you can see what kind of shape the cards are in. I'm happy to do that because that's exactly what I would want as a collector as well. But disclaimer, none of these, none of these right here are mint. Um, this Pikachu here though is looking okay. I mean, he's got some surface stuff going on and the edges are a bit eh. This is the thing. I mean, the center is really not good on that. Um, I don't even think that was the one that I was talking about, though. But anyway, anyway, I digress. V very interesting Koro exclusives in here as well. Lots of those, which is really nice to see. Vending, lovely. Love to get a little vending alarm. Like dings every time there's some uh, vending series in random bulk. Amazing how kind of common it was for Japanese collectors to have bits and pieces of it here and there. Um, it should demand the premium that it does though now. I, I just think they're stunning cards, the Venice. That's one of my favourite Arita artworks. Just love that Onyx. Uh, nice Yukimori, uh, Play Doh Omanite there. There he is again. Oh, Vendin! Ding, ding, ding. Beautiful gym cards. Uh, gym, gym is so good because it's all based on the uh, all artwork from the um, the game artist Ken Sugimori, which is what a lot of people associate Pokemon with is this kind of art style, along with the games from the old school, old school games. Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> right, Onyx Koro Koro. Very strong start on this pile. Ooh, that's a cool primate. Very nice. So guys, just as a heads up, I think with a lot of this... Vending, ding, ding, ding. Uh, oh, wow, look at that. Now that is a Pokemon card. Look how cool that is. God, this reminds me of like Cell from Dragon Ball Z. Not in the best, con it's really not in good condition, but... Whew, that artwork is so cool. That is a banger. That's my favourite card of the night so far right there. Villain 
Oh, Velen Watsy Mystery Packs. You could be on something there, Vichy. <laughs> that that is kind of that is kind of what we're thinking. Um, with a lot of this bulk, is kind of passing on some vintage classics through the medium of kind of good value mystery packs. Vending, ding, ding, ding. That's gonna be the oh, look at that Coro. So this could be a trainer magazine, actually, or a deck exclusive. I don't know, but how 90s is that? Look at the computer computer generated art on that. <laughs> That's so good. So good. It feels so thin, that card. Um, beautiful cards. What the hell's this? Vending, ding, ding. So much vending. Some beautiful, beautiful cards in these, in these uh, piles, man. Um... Meowth is my favourite card of the night. Yeah, this 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 guy here. Yeah, he's very, very cool. I don't know what the hell that was. There was just noise somewhere. I haven't dropped something, have I? Oh, I don't know. I don't know whether it's just me scrape. I don't know, it might be me just scraping something. This is the problem when you've got noise cancelling headphones on. The only monitoring I've got is coming from my mic. I can hear the music back just like you guys can as well. So I can fully immerse myself in the stream experience as well. Right, Rocket, which is probably my favorite. Well, no, it is. My that, that's the Abra I'm on about. This is a great card. Love the artwork on that. And I believe there was a throwback to this at some point. I can't remember what card it was. If someone does know, let me know. That Zatu is really cool. Natu. Very nice. Oh, that's going to be a band jinx. <laughs> Interesting. Lots of band cards in here then. Oh, nice. Love that ghastly. Oh, and that haunter. So cool. So yeah, my 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 oh, another vending jinx. Wow, vending ding. Uh, my favourite Watsy sets are. It goes Rocket. Uh, then it goes Neo Destiny. Then actually no, Gym One and Two come before Neo Destiny. Then after that it's Neo Gen. So they're my top five. Lots of very similar cards, lots of repeats. There you go, there's another band jinx. So lots of band cards, which provide a lot of value in these lots. Lots of value in these lots. Another band jinx, another band jinx. Um, that's a beautiful art there. Look at that. Lots of uh, drowsies and cadabras we're seeing here. Nice. Oh, cool. Mr. Mime deck exclusive, I believe, right there. More drowsies and vending ding. Cadabra. Nice! God, these piles are getting big to the right of me here. You can see just, just on this right hand side. Uh, Zatu, more band jinx. This is such a cool artwork. This is one of my favourite. If you guys follow me on Instagram, um, Tojo, that's my personal account. Obviously, follow us on Villain Cards as well, but Tojo TCG, if you follow me on there, this made it onto one of my Pokey Art Spotlight posts. It's one of my favourite arts from Jim. I think it's so good. Okay, cool. So I believe that's the end of the psychics, and these the rest of these will be energies. They are just a random firing. Hold on, Houndoom, what are you doing in there? Wait, this car's still in here. Oh, this chaos this is. Right, energies. And then there's just some more cards here. Unknowns, nice. Ooh, nice. Oh, beautiful Mew there. I can't remember the, the set release information on that Mew. Lily pad Mew. Very nice card. On you go. Right, next. We're almost there, guys, and then we can get to the hollows. Even worse, checking the trainers, some of them are worth a lot. Yeah, I know, there's some... Well, there's a band trainer on the top of this pile right here, Mew Mew Milk. Uh, so I know that that's a band one, which is... Very nice. Let me just get rid of the energies off the back and just make sure there's no lingering Pokemons. Oh, I'm gonna have fun sorting this on Saturday, Com. Here we go. Beautiful, look at that Polyrath. So good, so, so good. We really were spoiled in the original eras of the TCG. I mean, some of the art book now, it is, it is really, really good. I'm not gonna lie, it is really good. It's just, you know, sometimes you just can't beat the classics. They're just so good. So, so good. 
another favorite of mine love that polywag <laughs> is that the non-glossy mute it looked glossy let me just i'll just double check where are you mew come back let me find it again come on where are you there it is uh it looks glossy to me yeah, and it's in, it's not in good condition. Look at that, stay at that. But it's glossy, so I don't know the I don't know the release info on that. But if you know, let me know in the chat. Go for it. I'd love to hear about it. Gen I genuinely, would that isn't me being sarcastic, by the way. I genuinely, would love to hear about some information on that. Um, more beautiful cards. A storm is cool. Love that. Side up, very, very cool. Love that. Uh, what I think is really cool about like the TCG is sometimes you like associate certain memories. Uh, vending ding ding. Beautiful Lapras. Terribly off center, but still beautiful. None the less. Yeah, and I associate. There's a Marrel. What is the release info on that? That is glossy. No rarity, no symbol or anything to go by. Uh, the alt, alt, uh, I have that mute. Oh, okay, alternate arts definitely a step in the right direction. Much prefer them to hyperis. Yeah, me too. I'm on board with that statement right there. And I think that the alternate arts, the tag teams from the Sun and Moon era, are very, very good modern cards as well. They did an extremely good job with those. And even the half arts, I have a lot of the uh, tag team half arts just because they're by Rita. So obviously I had to had to pick those ones up. So this is second to last pile. We'll finish off with some trainers uh, at the end. <laughs> Clef is so cool. Clefairy, sorry. Very, very cool. Hoot hoot. Nice. Some very nice cards here. Licky Tom, I always love that artwork. Synonymous. Uh, Mew is Cora Cora. Thank you. As well as uh, the Marrow, apparently. Nice. Thank you. Oh, love that Togepi. Iconic artwork, guys, in my opinion. Along with that Dunsparce Teddy Ursa. Not Towel again. Such a cool Pokemon. There's that Eevee. LT Surges Eevee. Or Lieutenant Surges Eevee. The boy. The mascot. The Meowth. More Noctowl. Oh, there you go. I believe that's another Koro uh, exclusive right there. That Jigglypuff. And guys, you know, I, I, I know a fair amount about Japanese releases, but I'm always learning, which is just awesome. I love hearing more info about these releases. Um, there's just so much to keep up with, which is great. Vending, ding, ding, Dodrio there. Uh, that is a Coro uh, Dratini, I believe. Oh, Con. The Snorlax. There he is. Look at that. That's very cool. I know Vici will be after that one as well, I believe. Maybe even Rampage as well. Because <laughs> I know he's looking for some Snorlax. Oh, we've got two. There you go. That's a win. Maybe we've got a third as well, so we can keep everyone happy. Uh, very nice snubble. More Meowths there. Always welcome to see more Meowths on this channel. Love that Kangaskhan there. Oh, another Meowth. Oh, wow. That is very cool. That is a wicked card. Look at that, Con. I think Villain are going to build up one of the biggest... Oh, there's more than one of them. That's perfect. One of the biggest Meowth binders to ever exist. <laughs> We're very keen to collect Meowth cards. Beautiful. Right, last few now. Jungle Eevees, nice. Oh, vending, ding, ding. I, I love vending. It's so good. Lots of those Teddy Ursas. Meowths. Oh, very nice. Not nice condition, but a nice card. Nice. Some more iconic sets. Look at that Rocket Eevee. So cute. So, so cute. Oh, Neo uh, 2. Oh, vending! More vending! So much vending. Not a tower, Dratini, some more rockets, some more gym sets. More gym. Nice Kangaskhan there. Oh! Oh, two! 
Oh, two two white diamond uh, chances from uh, the gym sets without the names filled in. Wonderful. Beautiful Japanese exclusives, these. You don't see them that often. I mean, they're fairly common, but you normally see them with writing on. And there's just two of them down on the end. Love that. That's great to see. God. Beautiful. Uh, you ticked about everything off I sent you earlier. That's good. Oh, Brad's here. What's going on, Brad? How are you doing this evening, my friend? I hope Valheim is treating you well. Nice chance here. I do have it. I have it in my, um, my full gym Japanese uh, master set collection as well. Like I said, all of my favourite collections, all favourite sets, the ones that I kind of prioritised picking up at the start of last year, the end of 2019. Because that's when I kind of kind of honed in on collecting rather than just... <laughs> I've counted 30 times you said vending. Meanwhile, I'm looking at my complete binder with the Masakis and Red... Oh, All right, flex. Zay flexing on the stream with his Masakis. Oh. No, they are awesome cards, Zay. I'm very jealous. Um... So we've got some Moo Moo Milks, another Venin series uh, trainer there. I am knocking cards off there. Uh, some well, The thing is, these trainers are normally what's quite hard to complete sets with. Is that There's, a, there's an error card of that in English, I believe. That's a band art because it's got gambling on it. I know that for a fact. Uh, another Moo Moo band there. Nice, love that card. That's Mr. Fuji. Iconic Sugimori card there. Beautiful. Uh, Professor oh, Imposter Professor Oak. Beautiful. Um, stunning artwork on some of these. Like the Sugimori artworks are so, so good. I do not recognise that at all. Uh, Pokedex. Nice. What's it say? Handy 505. <laughs> Blaine's Quiz. Very nice. Ooh. Interesting. Vending. <laughs> Oh, that's a middle finger, Sabrina. That's another band art. And all of these band... Oh, that's another band art there. Slot machines. All of these add up to something. I'd love to see a Misty's Tears in here. I love that um, uh, Lieutenant Surge card with Alexa Buzz. It's one of my favourite trainers from the gym set. Just love the artwork. It's so good. There it is. So I need this for my uh, gym collection. So I'm likely to ask Connor about this. Um, okay, I see a card behind here that could be extremely rare. If it's got the outline, uh, that's got the outline. Does that mean that it's the rare version, or does that mean that it's the not rare version? <laughs> I must have shut down his system, guys. I'm quickly gonna have a look at the release. Unless someone knows, unless someone knows. Um, but there's two versions of that card. One has the red outline around the rocket symbol, and one doesn't have. <laughs> Connor says £40 to you. Brilliant. Uh, what am I looking for? It's rocket sneak attack, I think. Is that what it is? Rocket sneak attack? Someone tell me. Asa says no. Rare version is without, thank you. Okay, there we go. That's solved. Appreciate that. But it's always good to look out for these things. There's another Sabrina there, middle finger Sabrina. Uh, Lass, base set, interesting. <laughs> Love that artwork. Another Blaine there. All right, last little bit of these uh, these trainers, and then we can get into some hollows. Get into some hollows. I, I don't know how rare that version is, by the way, that card without the outline. Um, oh, it's another, another, another one. Stunning. This, this is the great thing about picking these collections. Oh, I've got another band trainer. Picking up these collections is that you just get all of the little things that. Oh God, I got excited there again. Another Sabrina, another one. Wow, incredible. Uh, staff discount. Computer says no. <laughs> Computer error, that's it. Computer error. Oh, beautiful. Another Sabrina. Jesus. Oh, I need that as well. 
I, sh I really shouldn't say this on stream where I'm like hand picking cards out, but guys, it's the collector in me. I can't help it. You know, it's like you're doing the want, 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 need, got, want, got, got. Oh, that's a cool card. Look how cool that is. Could be a deck exclusive. Uh, more decks, more Blaine stuff. Very nice. Another ban Moo Moo Milk there. God, so many of these. Oh, I love that. Look how cool that is. Look at him chilling. Look how happy he is with his Cinder Quill. That's so good. Lots and lots of trainers with plenty of band arts in the mix, which is lovely to see. Another Moo Moo Milk band. Oh, wow. And then Misties. All the Misties. All the Blaines. And then more Bill. The most common trainer you'll ever know. And then an Imakuni on the end. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. Coro exclusive, probably. It's glossy. I assume. But yeah. Uh, super rare. It's a trophy card. Okay, that's why. The egg trainer in French is called Bay. You're welcome. <laughs> 80 pounds for both. So I think the highlight there on that one maybe might be this no symbol base Pikachu. Which is a very, very um interesting development i was not expecting to see uh, no rarity base and there might be more in this lot that i just haven't seen that's just slipped under the radar so i'm just trying to make some more space because i've just got <laughs> stacks of cards everywhere so i'm going to leave that there so you've come for the good stuff this is all hollows so i'm going to take a little drink break i'm going to leave this little charizard with you for you to look at with that beautiful swirl that you can see just in that top left corner look how good that is look how good that looks guys i've been going for two hours now i appreciate everyone who's still chilling out in the chat we're just about to hit two hours just hit two hours <laughs> i imagine by the way with these hollows i'm not expecting anything mint in any of them I, I really don't think any of these are going to be mint. I can already see silvering all up the edges. And you can see from the back of just like this one that they are not mint. But I really don't mind. <laughs> I just love looking at these cards. They are classics. So uh, this, yeah, this, this, um, this person's collection is absurd. This is definitely someone who's collected since a very young age. Oh my God. I just opened it up on like my favourite, one of my favourite cards of all time. Anyway, let's get cracking into these. So, a oh, beautiful uh, dark Charizard. Oh, and if one wasn't enough, there's two. And if two wasn't enough, there's three. <laughs> uh, but these are not in great condition. I'm not going to lie. They're not looking great. Uh, and then we have... Oof, gotta love the Tropical Island sets. Ah! <laughs> oh God! <laughs> I'm just gonna look at <laughs> Oh God! Oh, you just you just don't get sick of seeing that card ever. Yeah. Okay. So. Oh, God. God just, put that, just put it away. Um, let's have a look. So, I, this, this, I can already tell this is not in good condition. Uh, but it's in good enough condition. And I've seen much, much worse on eBay go for freaking stupid money um but regardless like i said this is the original charizard guys it's the first this is the first and you can never ever take that away from a card like this that's just stunning let's uh let's let's get that in a sleeve let's let's get that in a sleeve immediately 
Um, I should sleeve all of these, shouldn't I? <laughs> um, how many sleeves have we got? Right, I've got another bag of 100 here. Just a little peep of what I opened on. <laughs> That's my Charizard, guys, right there. I, I, I love base Charizard, but I'm telling you now, I'm telling you now that Lugia, I'd take, I'd take a first Neo Lugia over a first uh, Shadowless Charizard. I just would. I'd, there's just something in me, I just prefer Lugia as a Pokemon. Because at that point, what difference is an extra 100 grand or whatever the stupid monetary value of these things is? At that point, the money doesn't matter. So I just want the thing that I love the most. Um, so yeah, bold statement, bold claim, but that's just the way that I'm built. <laughs> I just love Lugia. So yeah. So. The, oh, it says definitely sleeve them all. So the, the beautiful thing about this card is that it's the only card I think that they've ever changed the hollow box size to fit the three attacks. And I think, I think this was the first ever card to feature three attacks, which is why they had to shift the hollow box up. Uh, that's a double swirl, I think. Maybe it's just the positioning, I don't know. You see on the left side, there's there's definitely one there. I don't know whether there's another one there, but they're just insane. Um, I, I'm going to go through these in smaller batches so that I can sleeve them, take a break, and then carry on, and then sleeve them, take a break, carry on. Gen 1 better than Gen 2. I'm agreeing with you. It's my gen. I love Gen 2 more than anything in the world. It's just beautiful. Right. <laughs> Pinnick. Right, come on. Rockets Mewtwo. Oh, God. Hungry Snorlax CD Promo Hollow. Cool Porygon CD Promo Hollow. Oh. Dark Gyarados. Which has scratch marks. But, I mean, iconic art artwork. And another one. Oh, these are special, man. These are just special cards. I, I, I mean, these dark cards are my favourite Watsy cards. They're just, they're just ridiculous. Uh, it was the first one through attacks, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, oh my God. the hollow box. Remember as well. The hollow box on these, the hollow patterns, um, for base especially. Just look at the hollow on that. It's stupid. Um, base had the galaxy foil or the Cosmo. It's galaxy foil, I call it, but uh, galaxy foil um, hollow pattern. Whereas in English we didn't have that. We had the, uh, the star kind of weird pattern. Oh, that is a. I love rockets so much. It's so good. It's so good. Oh man, Dark Slowbro. Dark Magneton, which is all hollow and all scratches on this card. This camera makes it look quite good, but if I turn it that way, you could see that he's not having a great time, this card. Um, am I able to read Japanese? Absolutely not. I wish I could. It's on the bucket list. I really want to learn Japanese. Um, the Sleeve Master can read a little bit. She's done Duolingo, I think, for like two years on Japanese, and she's, she's, she doesn't give herself enough credit. Um, let's sleeve all of these guys up. No messing. I'm nowhere near through this hollow pile either, which is just, it's just beautiful to see. Big fan of this Rockets Mewtwo. This is a, this is a sick card. This is. Um, what a start already. What a start. Let's get the next next little little batch. Go through this. Let's 
check the chart, what's going on. I learned it for five years, I can't read it. Oh, wow. Uh, Holly's had to leave the room due to the noises you're making. <laughs> oh dear. Swirl bottom right on this, Kabutops. Love that. Ooh. Now this one looks in really nice shape. That's probably the best, the best looking hollow I've seen so far. Polyrath from Neo 2. A Hitmon top from Neo 2 as well. And another one there. Love the artworks on these. Oh, Hitmon Lee from Fossil. Swirls everywhere on these cards, guys. Swirls everywhere. That is a Hitmon Chan that has seen better days. Mime, mime. Shout out to Ash's dad. Oh, unknown. Holographic from Neo 2. This is one that I actually need for my Neo set. I'm building my Neo Holo set. Waba Fet. <laughs> Such a cool artwork. So, so good. Oh, base Mewtwo. Guys, can you imagine if we had a, a no symbol base holo card? <laughs> oh, you, um. Don't pile your stacks too high or slide over. Yeah, the. Um. The sleeved ones are not going in, in tall piles, don't worry. Um, you are opening uh, a very interesting package on the channel. Got Tojo's handwriting on it. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, straight from Villain Cars HQ. Uh, I need to prop my chair up a little bit. Can I do that? Is that possible? I'm gonna tuck in, because I'm my back is starting to go, which is what happens with streaming, guys. You just get really bad back pain. So, Mewtwo. Ooh, Misty Hollow from the Haneda uh, City theme deck. Very nice. And then a Rocket Sneak Attack, or Rocket's Attack, I believe. Got the hollows on these vintage Japanese cards are just something else. So guys, when I work my way through a little batch, let's play a little game. Just shout out your favorite card from the stuff that I'm sleeving. Be interested to hear what everyone is interested in. Too many big Mewtwo's for me tonight. Yeah, Panya, we know. <laughs> we know you're a big fan of the old Mewtwo. I'm a big fan of Mewtwo as well. I love him. Such a cool Pokemon. Such a badass. <sighs> oh god, this stack is just endless as well. Unbelievable amount of hollows. These Neo 2 ones look real good though. The Neo the Neo cards look in the best shape. I'm not gonna lie, guys. Like, look at this. Uh, hit my top, excuse me. Very nice. A few surface bits on the back. There's a dent bottom left there. So no sending this to PSA if they were open. That would be an auto six. And then you've got everything else to contend with. That would probably come back like a four. At that point, when you're that low down in the scale, it's kind of hard to. It's hard to say where things would go really. Flipping heck. I'm, I'm getting hot. I can't, I can't deal with this. There's just so many great cards. So here you have one of the hardest cards to grade from Neo Genesis or Neo 1. As you can see, there is so much hollow on those. Jungle Kangas Khan. Very nice there. Fossil Ditto. Jungle Clefable. Very nice artwork. Very dark print. Oh, Dragonite. I think there's probably a case to say that we have every... We're probably pretty close to having most of the original era hollows here. Chansey! Beautiful Chansey. Another card that is very, very hard to grade in English base set. Oh, God. It's my favourite card probably of all time right here. This is a... Uh, timeless... I've been such pain. If you get a dark right shoot, I'll be sent into intensive care. <laughs> Wobber loves it. Yeah, this is uh, this is. I mean, it's it, it's hurt. It's got a bend. Look at that crease. But I do not mind. I take those all day. A beautiful card, nonetheless. We've got a jiggly puff. And what am I talking about? Wiggly tough from jungle. 
And then a very, very pleasant surprise. We have a Game Boy Hollow Dragonite card, which has seen better days. The condition is not great on it, but a Ken Sugimori classic, a Japanese exclusive Hollow that we will never see in English. So it's always beautiful to see those cards. Wow, look how dark the ink is on that base Nido there. Beautiful. Just putting, can I get it? God's sake. Oh yeah. Jumpluff from Neo. Oh, beautiful little Christmas card there. Oh, Butterfree from Neo Disc. Free. Another one that good old Tojo needs for his Japanese Neo Hollow collection. <sighs> what the hell? Very easy one for me on that pile, guys. It's gonna be that Lugia. There's just not even a close, it's not even a close competition. Not even close. But if the Lugia wasn't in the pile, because obviously I'm biased, my second vote would go to that Game Boy Dragonite. This guy right here. Very nice card. Um, and guys, you know, like I said, these, these cards are not in the best of condition. Remember that they are not, nothing is looking too, too clean. However, the best thing about that is it means that you can pick them up, especially because you're buying off us, um, a very, very competitive price. Perfect for binder cards, etc., etc. That is indeed an Arita artwork right there. I know someone shouted that in the chat a few minutes ago. Kangos Corn. God, so much nostalgia in just these cards, just looking at them. They're just stunning. Guys, I'm not even halfway through the pile. I'm not even joking. <laughs> not even halfway. Right. Let's get a little drink because my throat is starting to hurt a little bit. Uh, it's Neo 2 that has the exclusive hollows. Uh, Neo 2 has the... Um, the Butterfree is the one I'm looking for, but not scratched. Yeah, you might... Oh, kind of controversial with that Game Boy Dragonite call. Yeah, the, the, the Butterfree is scratched. And for me, yeah. I'd love to haggle for some of the Hollow Aresas. Yeah, I mean, just DM us. We are, we are more than happy to send over condition photos and stuff like that. But like I said, remember the, the condition on these is not, is not great um, for the vast majority of them. Uh, when he says we aren't even halfway, but it's bedtime. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's getting to my bedtime now. I'm doing my best. I'm doing my best. This is the last stuff that we're going through. Oh, there he is. The toad boy. Yeah, he's got a little crease here. Cornering problems. Definite hollow box issues. Silvering. Still, first is the first. The classic is the classic. Can't beat it. Oh, very dark print on that meganium there. Very nice. Hard to beat base Charizard. It is indeed. Oh, Pincer from Jungle. Scyther from Jungle. Very nice. This is the jungle card for me. This is the card. I associate jungle with this card. Oh. Rockets track and I. It's horrific the condition on that. I'm not gonna lie. But still beautiful. Wheezing, dark wheezing, dark arbuck. Oh, rockets hit one chan. Beautiful. Beautiful. Blaine uh, not Blaine's Moltres. That would be a big one. Blaine's Moltres is the big one, but Rockets Moltres. And then another Rockets Moltres down on the end there. It's sleeve time again. Uh, be watching the rest of the stream tomorrow, eh? no problem. Catch up whenever you have time. That is absolutely fine. We just appreciate you being here. Even if you're here for a few minutes and catching the stream, it's great to see people just drop in and interact in the chat. We love that. God, these hollows are insane. It's just an insane amount of hollows. Um, 
I'm not gonna lie, I, I would have quite liked for some of them to be in a little bit cleaner condition. I was expecting, normally with this stuff, you can write off a lot of them, but you expect a certain amount to be, you know, clean. Um, this neocod feels dark and thick. Feels really thick. Must have just changed the card stock or something. I don't know. But that Venusaur is beautiful. Would love to see a Blastoise. Do you reckon we're going to see one? We might do. Yeah, I can see some water cards later on. Oh. Right, next batch, guys. Here we go. We've got a Rockets, another Rockets Moltres. Oh, stunning. Love that. Rockets Zapdos. A second one of those. Oh, Giovanni's Gyarados. Very dark print on that card there. That's a beautiful card. Oh, another one as well in the back. Wow. Oh, Giovanni's Machamp. Very nice. Giovanni's Nido King. Giovanni's Persian, a very hard card to grade in English. Uh, and then finishing off with Koga's Ditto. So some iconic Ken Sugimori artwork in these uh, gym sets. Like I said, it's in, you know, the, the combined gym one and two is probably in third place for me in terms of sets. I said it goes Rockets, then I think Neo Destiny, then gym one and two. And then Neo Gen after that. And that order will kind of change every now and then. But Team Rocket's always at the top. Always. But Jim is just perfect because you get the Sugamori art style with the badges in the corner and you get the awesome Pokemon artwork in the top. Um, I do have the full Master Collect uh, Master Set personally in Japanese for Jim just because I had to get it. I had to get it. Some stunning cards again. Making our way through this hollow stack. Yeah, the Zapdos is really something special. Um, I love this card. It's so, so good. And we've got that beautiful hollow swirl just up on this top one here. And then we've got another one down in the bottom right on this one. So swirls all round. But a very cool uh, Zapdos because you're just not used to seeing him with like less pointy wings and stuff. He's just... He's a bit, um, he's a bit more rounded in this picture, which is cool. Gives the, gives the card a bit of kind of individuality, which is always nice to see on these sets because you're so used to seeing cards in a certain way. However, let's keep moving. <laughs> Just an absolute banger. Erica's Venusaur. Now the Ivy Saw for me is, is just top tier. Erica's Vile Plume. Oh, there it is. Blaine's Moltres with a beautiful, beautiful swirl. Um, there is some scratches on the hollow and stuff. Obviously, nothing PSAable in any of this, I don't think. But still, I mean, it's just beautiful. I mean, these are perfect, perfect, perfect binder cards because there's no huge, like, physical. Uh, ailments on any of the cards that you can see like to the naked eye there's no creases there's no like bends there's no like you know scratch marks like severe scratch marks or like writing big amounts of dirt like this is perfect in a binder this is all you need oh my god oh this one is th this one is not one of those cards though look at the scratches on that which is a huge huge shame but still, that's, an, that's another another iconic Charizard card right there. Iconic. Uh, just stunning. Oh, Dom. <laughs> is, is he still here? Is Red still here? <laughs> just another little casual Arcanine with that cent, front and centre swirl. Much cleaner, much cleaner than that Charizard. Ooh, another card that's extremely, extremely hard to grade. I mean, all the gym cards are extremely hard to grade because of the print lines. Two of Misty's Golducks, wow. Wow, wow, wow. 
uh, Tentacruel, Misty's Tentacruel, and then probably my favorite holo from the set, uh, Misty's Gyarados. This is just perfect in my eyes. I think this is, I don't think there's a better card in the set, personally, um, aside from maybe Erica's Ivysaur. But Hollows, this is the one for me. <sighs> Flipping heck. It's just, just it's Hollows everywhere. All right, I'm sorry, Connor. I know it's past your bedtime. I'm going as fast as I can. I'm also trying to make sure that we can see all the cards because it's important that we look at this. Some of these gym cards look very, very clean for binder cards. Um, you know, I mean, look at that. Arcanine. Minimal whitening. A few scratches. Basically fits in near mint slash excellent, essentially. Based on our, based on our um, grading condition guidelines. I know some people's near mint is like way worse than what I would class as near mint. Um... But yeah, flipping egg. So many, so many hollows. Love that. Uh, love that Venusaur. So, so good. Whew. Right. We're getting, we're getting there, guys. We're getting there. So no human person isn't around. Or well, they might be. They might be. They might be. But there's that Raichu, chunky Raichu. We've got Lieutenant Surge's Magneton before I ruin the next card, which is Koga's Beedrill. Another Koga's Beedrill. How many be the Beedrills everywhere? Another one. There's another one on the stack over here as well. I'm gonna just bring that one across. There you go. There's another Koga's Beedrill for you. If that wasn't already enough for you, many, many cards. Let's get all these sleeved up. This is where I need the sleeve master, really. I should have asked her to join the stream and been on sleeve duty. But then she'd have been sat there waiting for me to get to this point the whole time, and it just. No, no one deserves to go through that. No one. I tell you that. Right. Oh, that looks clean. And oh, I've forgotten to sleeve these guys. I need more. I need more sleeves. He's going into intensive care. Not to flex, but Zay, what that normally means is you're about to flex. <laughs> That's normally how it goes. It's if you say, not that I'm, or not that, or I don't mean to be, and then you do that thing. It's normally how it goes. But yeah, that is a beautiful card in first edition. I'm very jealous. It's a great card to have in your collection collection rather get to that point in the stream where I'm like oh it's the bin that's making a noise all well, this Alakazam has got a whatever that is what a shame oh but we've got one behind it that <laughs> doesn't have it which is great because this is a great card this is Sabrina's Alakazam ooh so we've got some Neophile Hollows Okay, randomly just back to jungle again. Some beautiful uh, evolutions here. Oh, Fossil Moltres. Very, very nice. Base set Nine Tails, which is very, very much worse for wear. And then we have a uh, base set Magneton, and then a Fossil Magneton as well. Very nice, very nice. I'm going to have to create a new pile because they're starting to slide. That's what happens. Bam, bam. Oh, man. What? These streams, they just knock it out of you because you just... Sometimes, it's like you're a kid in a candy shop and you just get all, the, all of the sugar rush all at once from all of these amazing cards. I mean, what... An, it feels like an age since I was looking through those uh, Bandai cards and the McDonald's cards at the start. It's just incredible how many 
awesome, awesome cards we've got in today's stream. And we're not quite done yet. I've still got some to go. Now this Raichu looks clean. This Raichu looks real nice. That is a very, very nice base set Raichu. Oh, followed by a very nice fossil Raichu as well. So we've got Pichu from Neo Gen or Neo One. Base set Zapdos, which is absolutely just battered. Battered. Uh, jungle Electrode, very nice. And uh, then we've got a Jungle Jolteon. And then a Neo One uh, Amphros. Very nice. Very, very nice. I'm going to go through the rest of this and then I'll sleeve all the rest while I'm talking to you guys in the chat. That way I can do a little bit more interaction. Let's get through these. Oh, Fossil Lapras. Oh, the boy. Best starter of all time, in my opinion. Oh, I've got two of them as well. Flipping it. Ooh, very nice. Articuno from Fossil. I've got a Neogen Steelix, which is very clean. That is a very nice looking card. That's in great shape, that is. Not just one, we've got two. Followed by beautiful Skimori. And I love the silver kind of metallic finish to the metal cards that they bought with the Neo era. Very, very cool. Yeah, I'm sorry, human person. Oh, Now that is a card right there. That is a beauty, that is. Sizzle. What's this? What's this? What's this doing here? Is this just it? It's just energies? They're just random energies on the end. I was hoping to finish on a bit of a bit of a climax. Well, I mean the sizzle's good enough, right guys? <sighs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable set of holo cards. Connor, I hope you're ready. <laughs> We've got some serious, serious inventory here. Um this is going to be fun. It's going to be very fun. So, guys, that is, I believe, I don't have any more bubble wrap packages sat next to me. They're all, they're all done. They're all dismantled. They're all on the floor, creating a great big mess. <laughs> Sizzle never has a bad card. Correct. Never. There's a hollow scissor in. There's a diamond and pearl set, Gen 4 era set, where it's like this dark, it's like scissor and this dark uh, moonlit background. I can't remember what uh, set it is, but I gave the copy that I had to one of my close friends who's a big scissor fan. Uh, and I think that's the best scissor card I ever made. It's just so good. Artwork on it is just insane. Triumphant. Yep, yeah, there you go. That's the one. It's just so good. Right. Hollows galore. Coro Coro's galore. Vending galore. Uh, what else? <laughs> just everything galore. Band cards galore. I'm going to create a fat stack of hollows. And we just go through these real quick. Just so you guys can relive what we've got through from. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> just. There's just no words, really. I get to the point where I look through something like this and, like. I'm just like so awestruck by the number of cards that I mean, come on. I just I just get to a point where I like I don't really know what to say because I, I either that I don't know what to say or I get so lost in just looking at the cards that like I just forget I'm on stream. But that is a seriously seriously special set of cards that we've got in today oh, i mean come on just just so good so yeah i'll finish off the stream with all the good stuff the regular things that i say which is guys drop a like on the stream if you're not sub to us already it'd be awesome if you could subscribe 
Um, we're going to be doing a box break of, uh, what is it, explosive or super burst impact. They're kind of interchangeable in Japan. Hunting for Suicune and uh, Lugia ultra rare cards on the 10th, so coming this Saturday. Uh, one of our box break streams on Saturday evening, which I have an absolute blast with. Uh, that's happening. Uh, what else is going on? Yeah, the usual stuff, which is anything that you've seen today, obviously, will be up for sale at some point. We need to go through stock, get things sorted out. But normally, before we go and put things through and try and process things logically, if anybody does see anything they want to kind of snap a quick deal on, um, we normally process a lot of those deals first and just get them done. So, you know, we keep you guys happy that are in the stream. If you see anything you want, we'd like to give you guys that little benefit for, for tuning in chilling out with us in the evenings um shout out to this wicked meowth card that is now in the villain uh, the official villain meowth collection which is very very cool nice to get the first one in on that shout out to this insane legend card and beautiful binder of hollow cards from the diamond and pearl era just insane no rarity Pikachu that just made an appearance randomly. Uh, we've got Korra Korras, we've got Band Arts, we've got Vending Series. And we've also got these um, Cardass anime cards, which are in really, really good shape as well. Some awesome key uh, moments from the anime on there, which brings back a flood of nostalgia uh, for me. But, guys... I've got a lot of cards to sort through. It's going to be an un <laughs> it's going to be an unreal experience going through the back of all these again. Um, but yeah, guys, I'm going to thank everyone who's been in the stream today. All you guys who are kind of chatting, interacting, giving me information, asking questions. Um, that's the kind of environment that I love to have um, on our channel and the general community that we build. Um, you know, I'm all here about learning the cards and learning more about the hobby and meeting other people with mutual interests and mutual passion for these cards. Uh, that's what it's all about, ultimately, at the end of the day. So I've had a blast <laughs> looking at these cards. Um, I'm extremely starstruck by what I've seen today. And uh, yeah, along with your support, guys, it's been a great evening. So I'm going to leave you to it. Thank you for checking out the stream. Hopefully I'll see some of you guys on uh, Saturday evening for the box break stream that we've got going. Guys, enjoy the rest of your weeks. Anything you've seen today, obviously feel free to reach out. We can sort some out. And I'll speak to you guys soon. Have a great evening. Enjoy the rest of your weeks. And yeah, I'll catch you soon. Peace out.